This NFL Thanksgiving Megapod edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by MyBookie.ag. MyBookie is giving back this Thanksgiving by offering a risk-free bet on the Bears-Lions game. Simply choose a team against the spread for up to $250. If you win, congrats. If you lose, don't worry. MyBookie will give you all your money back. That's both for new and existing customers. And if you're new, don't forget to use that promo code SGP for up to $1,000 in free bets at mybookie.ag. We're also brought to you by Ace Per Head. Ace is the leader in paperhead providers, and they make it super easy to start your own sportsbook. Plus, Ace is offering up to six weeks free over at aceperhead.com slash SGP. That's aceperhead.com slash SGP. We're also brought to you by Manscaped. Manscaped is number one in men's below the belt grooming. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code SGP at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com with the promo code SGP. Ooh, welcome everyone to the sports gameplay podcast. I'm Sean stacking the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan, real money Kramer. What's happening, Kramer? Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, Sean. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, he's one of those guys who will get penetration. You of look awful thankful over there. I am. I am full of thanks. I'm full of the holiday spirit. And Are you thankful for the Eagles defensive celebrations last week? Uh, no, that yeah. was a, uh, that was a nightmare. I'm not a fan of celebrating when you're down 14 points. I don't know what you, you want to make that a Kodak moment. I'm probably dating myself, but Oh, Hey, we're going to pose for a picture. We're down 14 points. Our offense can't figure it out. That is what's really frustrating about the Eagles is their defense is playing so well. Week after week, everyone says, well, we got in the DFS. We got to take advantage of the Eagles secondary. And I've tried to tell people the Eagles defense is playing really well. They're getting turnovers. They're, they're limiting points. Everyone thought it was just because the Patriots suck. The bears suck. The bills suck. But Seattle comes in with a very good offense and can't do shit. The offense of course is a nightmare. We'll get to that later, Ryan. But uh, yeah, I'm thankful. I'm here. I'm thankful for all the great listeners. I'm oh. thankful for our sponsors. Wow. And uh, I hit Madden. He's one of those guys who will get penetration. I'm always thankful for Madden. I, I maybe they can dig him up out of the uh, Bloom and Onion or where, Mobile or wherever he's yeah, stationed get, right now. For bring back the the eight legged turducken. Yes. No one was mad about the turducken. No. Well, and I mean, ha- maybe a couple people that are into like <laughs> animal rights and stuff like that. But. No, but it's uh, you know the turducken. It's so it's just epitomizes America. It's like, yeah. The, the turkey's pretty awesome, but if, what if we put a turkey and a duck inside of it and gave it a couple extra legs so Madden could give it out? He always liked the move where he gave it Don't out. Don't forget the-, the chicken inside of the duck, Sean. It's I like did. a Russian I doll. A nesting doll of sweet, sweet, delicious meat. Sean- Ryan, this must be torture for oh. you. Soy boy over here reminiscing about your meat eating well, days. Well, before you turn your thanks into bullying. Um, Yes, which I've been known to do. I I am thankful for the reviews that the fine listeners leave, Sean, over on the Apple Podcast app. Oh, nice. I don't know if you can leave reviews on Google, Spotify. It's unclear. Just, uh, you know, click five stars wherever you can. Five-star review recent. Just came in from Cruisin1515. Maybe Cruzan. No jabronis here. Oh, If you're tired of getting stuffed in a proverbial (laughs) locker by some jabroni named Vinny out of Las Vegas selling Fugazi picks, then come over to the Sports Gambling Podcast family. Sean stacking the money. He even puts the quotes here. Sean stacking the money green and Ryan Soy Boy Kramer (laughs) offer solid betting and fantasy insight on every game. Nobody breaks down the college mid-majors, football and basketball like the Dantabase, Colby Dant. And these... Smart move here, not cursing. And these guys are funny as F. Hashtag soy boy don't care. Hashtag go and get you kale chips. Hashtag <laughs> no inflammation here. Hashtag plant life. I, I get the sense this is a fellow. What are we calling Thank him? Thank you for participating Veghead? in the Sports Gambling Podcast. Well, I mean, I would just call you a pussy. A but- soy toy? <laughs> the soy toys? Oh, my God, Ryan. God. We're good. I can just hear the people unplugging and canceling, unsubscribing. We can't have that. This is Thanksgiving. It is a celebration for meat. I will be eating uh, double the meat for both of us uh, this Thanksgiving. Oh, no, don't night. worry. I've had a conversation with your wife. You guys are going full, 
full soy this Thanksgiving. No, that's not happening. We already <laughs> got the turkey purchased uh, over at Whole Foods. <laughs> Going to be heading to Las Vegas, hang out with her dad and uh, his wife and my uh, nephews slash brother-in-laws. It's a long story. <laughs> and, a lot of the, well, they're they're the, younger. They're they're triplets yeah. who are younger, so they feel like nephews, but they are technically brother-in-law. So you just got to be careful with that kind of stuff. You know? I'm going to be hanging out with them. We got uh, no. I mean, they're. It's going to be a fun Thanksgiving. Going to watch some football. I I'm, I've got some mybookie.ag footballs mm. to uh, give to them, make their Thanksgiving <laughs> uh, dreams come true. Yeah, that's how you spread the word. You you pass it out, print it on a kid's toy. <laughs> it's like big tobacco. You got to get them hooked early. Hey, you like strawberry? <laughs> mango? Mango? You kids love mango? Oh, look, it's like a USB pod. Sean, I don't know if USB you've heard. Uh, vaping's not good for you. No, I haven't heard that, Ryan. That's what the CDC says. It's probably from the same guys who tell you that uh, meat's not good for you. They don't know what it's like to be a real man yep. and enjoy a delicious vape and enjoy a nice <laughs> chew. And I, it's probably the same people that tell you skull is bad for you. Again, I'm not, I'm, I want no part of that. I want some red meat and some skull and some Jameson whiskey. I'm going to be I having earn, all of them can this I earn, Thanksgiving. Can I earn some cred back? I did purchase my pack of uh, Turkish hand rolled tobacco for the camping trips I'm, I'm about to go on. So that okay, there you it go. is not meat. So Ryan is cool because he it's smokes. M- <laughs> it's but the hand roll. Come on. Real tobacco. I'm a real man. Like it gets in your teeth a little bit. There you go. Old school. And Ryan, since it is Thanksgiving, giving thanks, giving thanks to the listeners, the gentleman who wrote that review, oh. hit us up podcast oh, at yeah. sports gambling podcast.com to receive your free merch. And speaking of free merch, let's head over to the free roll football contest presented by bet spurts. Shout out. We got another uh, big tie. All these bye weeks destroying us over at the merch store. So congratulations to <laughs> JP clueless shallow, Hal, C Jod 86 and Jack N 19 all winning an impressive 11 and three. I've uh, was probably completely opposite there. I think I went three and 11 horrific week for me, but it doesn't mean we're not going to give you sweet, awesome merch. Hit us up podcast at sports gambling podcast.com for uh, your prize from the SGP merch store. Kramer, let's take a look at the leaderboard. Hold on. Enhance. Well, Sean, we, yes. we have not been doing well the past couple of weeks. No. Horrific week. Horrific but, weeks. But these guys certainly have been. As they sit atop the free roll football contest. Let's do the top five. Tied for fourth place, Iron Chef Brad and Chris Buck 40 with 96 correct picks. Tied for second. Big Ben W and Pickmaster. I feel like Pickmaster's been around for a bit now. And in first place with 98 correct picks, Duffman, 55. Gotti, 15, who was holding it down for a while, has dropped back into oh, a no. tie for sixth place with Nagel's Bagels. Ooh. Yeah, he hits us up on uh, Twitter a bunch. And NFL Pickles. I feel like both those. Yeah. Well, how about that? How about that? Everyone's doing well. There you go. Congratulations uh, to the weekly winners and best of luck to those of you climbing the leaderboard. Okay, Kramer, this is a Thanksgiving mega podcast. We were going back and forth on the format. We've decided here's what we're going to do. We're going to give you a DFS lineup for the Thanksgiving day games. We're going to give you a separate DFS lineup for the Sunday games. Oh my goodness. Then we're going to recap last week in the NFL and then give you out our NFL picks. Hence the name mega podcast. And of course, Ryan. How many people are going to complain? That what? Why that we, would they complain? I, I don't know. I feel like they people, don't like content. They don't uh, like free shit. They don't like us busting mm, our ass. I they don't like listen. the community that we're creating. That's what's awesome about the sports gambling podcast. And again, <laughs> big thanks to the listeners. Is yeah, we're sticking it to these big corporations. Yeah, we're sticking we it to these four letter media conglomerates who want to dip their mm. toe. Ooh, yeah, we think we know what we are talking about with gambling. We've been doing it when it was underground, when it was yeah. still illegal, before it was cool. We've been doing it. We've been locking it down. We've created a world for other fellow degenerates to come. They don't feel judgment. They they can throw out a 16 parlay in our Slack channel and not have anyone go, wow, that's crazy. Everyone scurrying around going, ooh, that's a good one. Oh, I think I might Square. hit him. You don't have to worry about that. We know you love gambling. We also love gambling. We're here to create content and celebrate. Wow. Losing our fucking minds, betting on games, and it's and much like I was thinking about this, right? Much like the Revolutionary War. Oh my goodness! 
the Revolutionary War. Were, was America bigger? Did they have more weapons? Did they have more money? No. What did they have? We're Mel they had Gibson. grit. They had determination. They had craftiness, all of which we had. And they had a they had a spirit. They had a group of people that came together and said, fuck you, England. We don't want to pay for your tea. We don't want to pay your bullshit taxes. We're tired of these corporate overlords. We're going to do things our way here in America. Shout out to the troops. SGP and nation take it over, Ryan. Firing up the troops. Felt felt great. Yeah, no, it just we're just murdering a bunch of red coats. We're murdering a bunch of red coats. I've been getting murdered against the spread, but that's not gonna stop me from gambling. You know why? Because my bookie.ag, they knew that guys like me who've been getting their ass kicked the past couple weeks, we need a risk-free bet. Something that we can't ruin our Thanksgiving on, at least uh, before one o'clock West Coast time, and that is <laughs> The Detroit Lions against the Chicago Bears. A complete risk-free bet. That's right. Up to $250. If you lose it, they will give you the $250 back. If you win it, hey, man, you're covered. And, it, of course, it's a spread bet. Can't do any crazy po- props or parlays on it. But uh, make sure you do that. New and existing customers are allowed to uh, hit up this sweet, sweet promotion while you're there, man. Perfect time to re-up. Get back in the... Get back in the mybookie.ag graces. The mybookie, uh, the props, the prop, uh, the custom prop thing. Totally awesome. I hit on a bunch of, uh, I filled in for Soy Boy over here on oh, the props wow. on Monday night and uh, had a nice little run. Went all in on uh, Lamar Jackson. Over rush yards, under attempts, under three and a half field goals. Mybookie.ag, where you play, win, and most importantly, get paid. Let's do it, Ryan. Let's give out. A, what are we doing, Sean? Let's. We're going to give out our DFS lineup for the Thanksgiving Day games. Only Got three it. games to choose from, and uh, you know, check out the DraftKings. They have a bunch of free stuff going as well. So kick your kick your lineup into those uh, free contests as well if you're going to be doing these, which you should because it's gambling and you need you? more juice. Why wouldn't you take an advantage of a free opportunity? You need more action. I love this guy. He's been great. He's been helping me win some fantasy football games. He's scrappy. He's fun. He runs around. Mm. He doesn't pass the K metric, but he does pass the rock. Give me oh, Josh wow. okay. Allen, $6,200 bills against the Cowboys. Uh, not surprising going right for that matchup. I, I wanted to stay away from that one because I did feel like it was going to be a little bit lower scoring. Mm. Uh, I mean, I think that's the way the bills know how they have to win here. And I think the Cowboys are going to bounce back. I, I had to go to the, the night game. I had to, that go to this. is a disgusting act. I had to go to the game that will certainly have points. And, uh, whether you like the revenge angle or you, or you like the fact that maybe this offense has cured itself, uh, Either way, either game script, Matt Ryan's the guy here. 64, wow. 6,400. Going to Matty Ooh. Ice here. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I could see them getting blown uh, out. Yeah, or <laughs> or if it's a competitive game. They can't game. run the ball. They, they just can't run the ball. Yeah, they're banged up. And, uh, so, anyway, you slice it. They're throwing the rock. Matt, Matty Ice is the one doing it. Give me Alvin Kamara in that game there. $8,100. This guy is a PPR beast. And, again, something doesn't seem quite right with uh, Drew Brees. I don't know what it is. He's having trouble with the downfield ball a little bit. That's, I mean, I think. why are people afraid to say it? he's having noodle arm? He's we're back. It's been a couple of years since we've had noodle arm. Yeah, uh, I people like that. Can't, we, they're scared to diagnose it. Well, because they're still putting up a shitload of points. They're still scoring a bunch. But Alvin Kamara, regardless, nine uh, catches on nine targets. I, you just have to have this guy in a PPR line. Sean, if you go back the last three weeks, he has twenty nine targets. It's insane. So yeah, give me Alvin Kamara eighty one hundred. Uh. Ditto. You got to take him. Got to fade this Falcons team against the run, against a running back, especially one that's going to catch the ball. We watched it. Uh, we, we saw it last week. Um, Ronald Jones looked pretty good catching the ball out of the backfield. I think Kamar is a great matchup, 8,100. For my second running back, he's $4,700. He's the only guy I've picked on the Detroit Lions. Give me Bo Scarborough. Oh, wow. Okay. First off, really cool name. He's a physical running back from Alabama. And. That's kind of been one weakness for the Chicago Bears. For whatever reason, Saquon Barkley, he's not right. He wasn't able to run the ball against the Bears. But you saw the Eagles with Jordan Howard. The The Bears, since they lost uh, Hicks, they haven't been able to stop the run very effectively. I figured I needed one player from the Lions and Scarborough at 4,700. He was the guy. Matt Patricia, you know he's going to want to pound the rock. And he's coming off a pretty solid game, uh, 98 yards on 18 carries. 
Uh, didn't score a touchdown. I think maybe he's due. Uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, give me Scarborough, 4,700. Great name. If you closed your eyes, you got to picture a guy chewing on a piece of weed or something like that. Yeah, you picture some fu- like white fullback. Uh, yeah. Instead, it's a dude with dreads. But he, he's fun to watch. He seems to be running hard. So, yeah, give me Scarborough. He's the exact kind of guy they've been searching or for. Sc- I feel is like. it Scarborough? Scarborough? I, don't, Scarborough? I think it's just Scarborough. Scarborough. Sounds like Scar, a sweet, bro. See, sounds like a sweet uh, name for a guy in a frat. I'm Scar, bro. Uh, Sean, I, I, we didn't do it for the first uh, Escalade that I backed into my garage, but we have to do it for this one. Uh, his size is really becoming a problem. I think he, he again Escalades don't have that noise, but it works. So, uh, well, it well in into his eighth month of pregnancy, Zeke Elliott. Uh, <laughs> we, we, uh, I, I've been targeting this Buffalo defense throughout the year against the run. And I just have to imagine Garrett has to hear the voices. Maybe he wants to get fired. Maybe he wants to go to the New York Giants. <laughs> but this that team. That has been a, a. And here's the thing. As an Eagles fan, I, I don't think I want that to happen because the Giants have figured out how to suck uh, just by themselves. They don't need the help of Jason Garrett. Jason Garrett feels like the anchor that's been stopping this Cowboys no. team from actually doing anything. So I, I'm kind of worried about a. I I would love to see Garrett stay in the division if he gets fired. Maybe the Redskins could pick him up, but really the the Cowboys have so much <laughs> talent and a profound lack of no. coaching ability. Yeah. Wait till they pay Dak so they can't have that. <laughs> uh yeah, Zeke 7400. His price is depressed a bit this week. I think they load up. I think they give him a lot of volume. Well, I'll save it for when we break down this game on the on the picks portion, but I think the Bills defense, the rushing defense has gotten a little bit better. Over the past couple of weeks, and I don't think they're they're the auto, uh, you know, auto fade as far as that's concerned. For my first receiver, give me Michael Thomas, ninety one hundred dollars. You have to pay up, but this Atlanta defense can't stop anyone. He's averaging twenty five point eight fantasy points per game. It doesn't matter who is the quarterback. He's already got one hundred four catches on one hundred twenty four targets. The dude is insane. Uh, yeah, give me Michael Thomas. Even though Drew Brees can't throw the football, it doesn't seem to slow this guy down. It's weird because I I do have some level of hesitation, and he just keeps producing. But Drew Brees' arm, there's there de- he's when your arm is not as strong as Eli Manning's, that's a problem. Drew Brees is in that range, but he still has you know ten targets on eleven no, no. or eleven targets. I agree, just- but I keep not wanting to take him, not wanting to pay up. I had to stack Julio. There's a lot of question. Mm. He's not practiced. We're recording this Tuesday night. He has not practiced this week. Uh, Sean, I know you have sources down there in the ATL. Is Julio going to play? I think Julio will play, but he oh. will be limited, Ryan. Mm. That is that is uh, that is what the the informers in the Magic City have told me. Well, I uh, I think this could be one of these Julio decoy games if he does play, and I'm going to go Calvin Ridley for 6600. Oh, there you go. Coming off a game where Julio was in and out of the game, what did he have? Only six catches, but 14 targets. Someone's got to catch the ball. I expect New Orleans and, and to be murdering this Atlanta team. There's going to be a lot of passing opportunity. Calvin Ridley for 6,600. New Orleans defense, not yeah. not kind of what it was. Uh, they had a nice little run there, but seemingly falling apart. Maybe We're, they just got lazy. They're like, Drew Brees is back. Yeah, you got Sean Payton with a sweet lipper in. Uh, they got the listening devices into the coaches' boxes. We don't have to bust our ass anymore. No. The the Saints' defense has fallen apart post uh, Teddy Bridgewater. My stack, give it to me, Cole Beasley. Mm. This dude just uh, he's been having a a pretty good season fantasy wise. I think it's a great revenge spot for Cole. He's I I feel like historically he's had good. Thanksgiving Day games against, uh, you know, were when he was on the Cowboys, and now going up against the Cowboys, he's gonna know where those empty spots are. Josh Allen's gonna be running around again. I, I just think Cole Beasley, forty seven hundred dollars. Give me another shot you on Cole. You stole my point. He knows how to play on Thanksgiving, Sean. The he slot. Is, How's the slot? That's how dumb football is. He is familiar how to how to play on a thir- random Thursday in thanks. Uh, There's in something November. there. There's something there. Uh, also, yeah, the, you pointed out he played for the Cowboys. Revenge angle. For 4,700. I got I, I had to get a bill in my lineup. Uh, Cole Beasley was the obvious one for my third receiver. This guy he's a cheap option. He's only $3,900. He's going up against this Detroit defense, which seemingly is kind of falling apart. 
give me Anthony Miller, nine targets, 77 yards. I, I think the Detroit secondary uh, is going to struggle. And Trubisky's not awesome, but he's he's shown the ability to kind of move the ball against suspect defenses. Ryan, you know that firsthand. Yep. And uh, he looks uh, pretty bad against a really bad Giants defense. But you can look bad and still get six catches for 90 yards. Oh, yeah, and, yeah. I, and I think that's kind of that's what Anthony Miller did. Or no, he had six catches for 77. That's what he did against the Giants. And I, I think he could have a similar output here against the Lions. I, I kind of wanted to try and figure out how to get some of the Bears running backs in here. I couldn't, but um, I, I went with Anthony Miller. So if Julio does not play. Yes. I I endorse taking a stab on Russell Gage. Mm. He had 10 targets last week in Julio's absence. If for whatever reason Julio is out there, or if you just want to pivot, Ted Ginn is the play for 30, 3,800. I, I just it, it just feels like one of those games where Ted Ginn's going to have a couple long-ass touchdowns as part of a blowout he really hasn't done much this year other than that first game where he had seven catches for 101 yards a bit of a a, a contest play here mm. like i said if julio's out now i'm i'm gonna be off the grid sean so yeah I'm so most, what are you gonna do i'm most likely just gonna roll with russell gage because i feel like it's a little bit more contrarian but i do like ted get in these lineups to because i i feel like for this slate you gotta load up on the running backs there's so much value in these running backs. You got to load up, and, and to your point, if you really want to get Michael Thomas paired with them, you got to you got to save other other places. So Ted Ginn's a good option for that. But I'm gonna go with Russell Gage. Two Falcons stacked with Matty Ice. I got a third Saint in my lineup. Wow. Okay. Is I, that I, legal? It's allowed. It is allowed. Give me Jared Cook, forty eight hundred dollars against Atlanta. I, I just don't think you can. We saw Jameis carve him up. And I, I don't see why Breeze and the Saints offense, even though Breeze can't throw the football, and that seems to be an issue, they're going to be highly motivated in this well, game do you have against his the Falcons. Do you have his numbers from last week? Who, Drew Cook. Brees? Cook. Oh, Jared they were, Cook? They eight, were pretty good. Eight, eight targets, six catches, 99 yards, and a touchdown. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't see why he couldn't put up similar numbers this week against the Falcons. Uh, yeah, I, I also got him in my lineup. Uh, this is kind of my alternative to playing, paying up for Michael Thomas. He, he's become – he's clearly a guy that, that Breeze has been looking to. Uh, last week especially, uh, two of the last three games, he's had more eight or more targets. I like the matchup especially, so, yeah, I'm going to go Jared Cook as well. For my flex spot, coming off a zero-point game, it is uh, – That is a disgusting act. Give me Amari Cooper. At home against the Buffalo Bills, I think. Uh, I mean, his home and uh, what does he have? His home and road splits, Amari Cooper, are pretty crazy. I think he's, I think he's gonna be able to catch the ball. I mean, zero catches. That's just insane for Amari Cooper. Is he hurt? No, I don't think he was hurt. I, I just think that <laughs> the Cowboys. Gilmore's too good. Yeah, Gilmore was on him, and you know you had Dak throwing a wet ball. There was just not a lot happening, and if you look at what he does at home. I mean, his last game at home, 11 catches, 147 yards and a touchdown uh, game before that five catches, one Oh six game before that 11 catches two twenty six on the touchdown. The dude is a beast at home. And, and I wouldn't be surprised if he has a solid game against the bill secondary. Yeah. I mean, we all know that Zeke never drops a wet ball. <laughs> My flex spot, Sean, you said you wanted to get a bears running back into the equation. I got a Bears running back into the equation. Tariq Cohen, I couldn't pull the trigger on David Montgomery because he really hasn't shown me anything. All I think maybe that Eagles game is the game you point to. I'd rather go with the, the Tariq Cohen angle. Maybe he busts one. I do think that, uh, you know, you played a Detroit Lion. I did not play a Detroit Lion. Uh, so I, I like this angle, though, for Tariq. One of the running backs. I, I think you got to get one of them in there. It's such a great matchup. Detroit has not been good at stopping teams in the running game. So five grand, Tariq Cohen. Yeah. Defense? Let's do it. Defense, and then we're out of here. That's pretty easy. Give me the Chicago Bears. Uh, I mean, Driscoll may not even be starting. Uh, they could be going to yeah. the third quarterback. And again, that's, that's this. Not good. <laughs> Driscoll's not very good. So if he's beating David him, Blow. Who very is that much, really his name? Yeah, B L O U G H. Thirteen and twenty three is a starter at Purdue. 
uh, which is not a powerhouse at all. I, I think the, the Lions really could be in trouble. So, yeah, David Blow, and uh, I have a feeling he may he may live up to his namesake and completely blow. And the Bears have kind of gotten back to their scrappy defensive ways. We saw Khalil Mack get a uh, turnover. As predicted, I asked Ryan if I could get any credit for that prediction. No. He said no. So yeah, give me uh give me the Bears at a very reasonable price of twenty five hundred dollars. Say uh, yeah, it feels low, right? Yeah. Uh, I feel like a couple like if this was week two or three, this would be a four thousand thirty five hundred dollar defense at least. So feel good about it, Sean. Before we get to our Sunday lineup, sure. Can I ask you a personal question? Let it rip, Lamar. So FFPC. Yeah. I've I've got some teams advancing, playing for some serious dough this week. 4K on the line. Are you starting Lamar? Ja I know this is going to blow your mind that I have both these guys, but Lamar oh Jackson. I know it's crazy. You're like, you start Lamar Jackson no matter what, right? What? Lamar Jackson is at home against San Francisco. D uh, San Francisco, decent defense. For Aaron sure. Rodgers is mm -hmm. at the New York Giants. Wow. That is uh, for four thousand. What the fuck? Four K on the line. Well, really, it's a fifteen hundred dollar delta. But what what are you doing there? Mm. That's a hell of a decision, isn't it? I mean, uh, how do they uh, are passing touchdowns six or four? Four. four. I, I think you got to go Lamar there still, just because of the running yards, right? Uh, how can you? I, it would make sense that he drops off a little bit fantasy wise because of the short week. Again, crazy amount of travel for them. Uh, six days of rest. San Francisco is a decent defense. Oh, man, that is tough. But I, I would just say, gun to my head, Lamar Jackson, rushing touchdowns and rushing yards. Since the bye week against New England, 30.25 points. At Cincinnati, 35.65. Houston, 35. At L.A., 37.95. Yeah, how I mean, that's a that, good, that's a good problem that to have. I, I think you just have to ride Lamar Jackson. Certainly, we always talk about, oh, hey, yeah, you want to fade someone coming off a career game, but I, I think within reason, right? Aaron this... Rodgers coming off a game where he threw the ball 30-something times and only had 100 yards. He looked like dog shit. But he hasn't looked good all year. He quietly has had a bad year in this LaFleur offense, and when they've done well, uh, when they've really Philly, beat up on teams, it's Aaron Jones. Philly, he's, he scored over 20 points just three times against Detroit. Sorry, four times. Detroit. Philly, Kansas City, and Oakland. Not none of those are good defenses. Now the Giants is a bad. Anyway, well the Eagles are a good defense now. Oh, I would stop say. it! Uh, you don't it's think just, they're a good defense now? They're okay. They're good. They're okay. They're six in DVOA, right? They're celebrating down. Right. That is an asshole move, but <laughs> doesn't mean they're not playing well. <sighs> they're trying to get some mojo back for the team. I get where they're coming from. They just need a quarterback, dude. Ah, uh, Carson Wentz has had his struggles, right? All right, should we do another lineup? Let's do it. No, there's Bonus no way lineup. people want to hear a, a two lineups. They do like free content, Ryan. Well, Sean, I just asked you a question, and I uh, answered the question for my DFS lineup by taking Aaron Rodgers. Wow. 6,500. Okay. Uh, I, come on. At this point, Tr Trubisky looked all right at times. Like, Trubisky made some good throws. Uh, uh, Robinson had 100 and something. Yeah. I, it, Aaron Rodgers is going to destroy this team. He just got embarrassed. His parents might have been in the audience, and they might have seen him <laughs> embarrassed. Now he needs to step up on the big stage in New York Ugh. under the bright lights uh, of the early kick. I'm, I'm, I'm kicking myself for not having Aaron Rodgers in my lineup. I went a little crazy here. I went Kyle Allen oh, no. at home against the Washington Redskins. He's a lot cheaper. He's only 5500 but... I mean, You're saving a thousand dollars to not have Aaron Rodgers. All right, let me see if I can figure <laughs> out against the Giants, dude. Have you watched this defense? They got worse out of the bye week. All right, I'm putting Aaron Rodgers <laughs> in. Jabril Peppers, I got, I got to do some, uh, I got to do some finagling here, but I think I can, I think I can figure it out. All right, All right well, Aaron Rodgers is in because hey, Jabril Peppers isn't even starting. He was like the one guy that was uh, kind I'm of telling you, he, there, there, there's a couple of bright spots on bright spots on that defense. He was one of them. I, this defense just Janoris Jenkins wants nothing to do with playing football. He's, he's ready to get the fuck out of there. Are Can you, you going Aaron, him, Brian? Final answer. Aaron yes. Rodgers, oh, Aaron Rodgers, like $6,500. We, we love you, Aaron. For my first running back, Christian McCaffrey. Yep. 
ten thousand five hundred. Uh, <laughs> I mean the Red the Redskins won a game. The Redskins won a game. Christian McCaffrey is just he's been crushing it. Uh, just the fact that he had a bad game last week and he still scored two touchdowns and had I, I get what another thirty point week. The guy just puts up points, and when you when you have a guy whose floor is thirty points, I think you pay whatever it takes. Uh, I know at some point it stops being valuable, but I'll take I'll take the thirty plus points against this Redskins team because they clearly don't spell him at all. He's still out there for ninety plus percent. No, he gets an insane amount of targets, an insane amount of catches, insane amount of rushes. Carolina, I, I do think that you could go back and forth. Is Carolina gonna just completely no show? Cause they're kind of no. out of it now, or are they going to rally around Ron? I, I think I'm leaning more rallying around Ron. Can I tell you though, this is a sneaky rivalry. This is a sneaky geolocation rivalry. Oh yeah, you're right. And I think Carolina is going to want to murder the Redskins. I think just from that perspective, Carolina comes in there with the, and they, you know, they're frustrated, right? Their kicker just lost them a game. Let's go beat <laughs> up on this doughy quarterback from Ohio Oh, my State. God. Haskins is uh, – he's hilarious on so many levels. you have uh, I was going to save it for the picks portion, but you saw him posing yeah. for the selfie. Case Keenum, He last play of the game, he's instead posing in the stands. The funniest part to me, A, is that he's not out there for the final snap yeah. of his first career Maybe he, he doesn't know how to do that play. He, he, they didn't – they didn't coach him up on victory formation. They didn't, they didn't bother, like, putting Case Keenum. Uh, we don't want to overload him. <laughs> the funniest thing is the guy – the person – I don't know their gender. The person he's taking a photo with is not wearing any Redskins gear at all. In fact, they're wearing a blue uh, jacket. So there's, like, a chance this was a Lions fan. Uh, my mind was totally blown. And uh, Berman had a great line on the fastest three minutes in football. He said, a photo finish between the Detroit Lions and Washington Redskins, Deej. And they didn't even have time to go into the into the Haskins thing. It was an all-timer by Berman. And it just, while well, we're giving thanks, you got to give thanks that uh, Berman and TJ are uh, back. It's good to see them on the ESPN uh, Plus. Yeah. Give it up for those gentlemen. Second running back, Sean. Guess who's playing the Kansas City Chiefs this week? Mm. Josh Jacobs and the Oakland Raiders. Not o last week. What did we I tell get you? Our shit going mentally. I told you that they would struggle to run the ball against the Jets, and they would be in trouble. It was my dog. It came in easy peasy. <laughs> Three weeks in a row, the Jets have scored thirty-four points. Kind of an insane. Kind of almost called that too. I feel like we talked about it at least. Derek Carr was benched. What is what is John Gruden going to get back to? He's going to give his bell cow the ball. Long Cox. Because that's the way you stay in the game against Kansas City, and that's the way we've seen teams beat Kansas City, a la Tennessee. 6,900. The price is right. I love this matchup. He's going to have a big bounce back game here. Josh Jacobs. This guy. Oh, here's a guy. Here's a guy. $4,700. They're at home. It's a great bounce back opportunity. There was just all this hubble blue mm, with the miles Garrett situation. Give me Benny Snell jr. Coming off a 21 carry 98 yard game. Uh, had a, had a catch for five yards. I think they're going to, you know, I think Pittsburgh is going to get back to pounding the rock uh, a little bit here against the Browns. I love uh, that play. I like the situation for the Steelers at home. Uh, they're going to want to get physical with the Browns and the Browns, quietly like a bad um i think they're putting up like 124 yards allowed per game they've kind of thrown you off the scent of how bad they are with this recent little run they beat pittsburgh when they had mason rudolph i kept calling for duck hodges they finally put duck in uh you know again against the Bengals. they straightened that out so i i really like the steelers team at home and i think benny snell is going to be a big part of the game plan and he's only 4700 dollars. again i don't think they've adjusted the price Who's your first receiver, Kramer? Love that play, Sean. Let me compliment that play. Uh, yeah, you got to stack Aaron Rodgers with Devontae Adams. Done. Mm. 7,000. Uh, this is a great matchup. Janoris Jenkins is just – <laughs> listen, uh, if the pro – see, I'll be back on the grid. I'll also be on his over props this mm. year. Janoris Jenkins is playing like dog shit. He's going to get shredded this week. It does feel like that is a, is a real possibility. I'm going to go with uh, this guy for the Tampa Bay Bucks, Mike Evans. Mm. It's a very scientific approach of every <laughs> other game. 
I, <laughs> oh, I think see, Godwin's had two in a row now, I think. I know. That, that, and Evans was kind of sick during the week. I think Evans is due. They're playing this horrific Jags defense. And uh, I think I'm, I'm just going to roll the dice. And I'm going to say it's an Evans game. I think I've mentioned on the pod before, but uh, during our uh, league, our old school fantasy football league, Ryan, I got a little, uh, had a couple cocktails, wasn't paying attention. Oh. And I accidentally drafted Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. And it hasn't been a problem at all. I've just been <laughs> starting both of them. And one of them always has a monster game. Yeah. And they've, they've worked out combined to be two great receivers. So it's. Uh, I got no complaints and Mike Evans against this Jags defense who just fell off a fucking cliff. Who's falling off more uh, Philip rivers or the Jags defense? Cause I, I thought the Jags defense was going to kind of be scrappy this year. It just was Jalen Ramsey that good, but that was a weird thing. Cause there were moments there. I feel like there were a couple games there where the Jags defense was doing okay without Jalen Ramsey when he was sitting out. Just they got gutless. I mean, Tennessee just took them behind the woodshed and, that's fucking shellacked them. They, they really did, Sean. They really did. Uh, I'm going to stay stacking dudes on top of Aaron Rodgers the way he <laughs> likes it. And I'm going to come back to that game. Give me Geronimo Allison. Wow. I, I was high on this guy preseason. He has completely flopped on me. This could be that breakout game. The Giants know how to give up the big play. I really want all of the receivers. Now watch, there's going to be like 50 mile an hour win in this game. But uh, yeah, Geronimo Allison, his price is only 3,800, which feels criminal. He, I'm, I'm double stacking Aaron Rodgers, dude sandwich, and Aaron <laughs> Rodgers man, manwich. I'm going uh, a similar strategy. I'm going for my stack, MVS Valdez Scantling. He was a guy that just keeps feeling due for a breakout game. Uh, they almost had that deep ball that he threw to him in San Francisco that they almost connected on. He's a little bit pricier, $4,100, but I, I, yeah, it's, I mean, what's your case over Allison over Scanlon? Is it just a price thing? What do you think? Uh, I don't have one because I also played Valdez <laughs> Scantling, all three Aaron Rodgers oh, receivers man. against oh this. God. This is better than your soy boy bet, Ryan. I Dude. love it. Yeah, I, I, I'll be honest. I put more time into the Thanksgiving lineup, but why not do this? Have we watched? We've you've watched every Certainly Giants possible. game, Sean. You've watched every no, one. No, they look Trubisky. They made Trubisky look decent, which I think is the greatest insult to this defense. And now you got Aaron Rodgers coming off a Pissed loss. Off. I, I mean, we jokingly said he was going to be in fu mode this whole season after that chugging incident this summer. Yes. Uh, beer chugging, guys. <laughs> Relax. Don't don't go there. Uh, but now he, this is a true F you. Th this is a moment. He's going to have a great game. I, I'm playing all three. I almost had Ward in there for the Eagles because mm. I liked what I saw there. That, I mean, and that might be the smarter move. Greg Ward is $4,100. Same price. He's kind of an interesting play here. They are getting Alshon uh, Jeffrey back, possibly Nelson Aguilar. I don't know about his snap count, but he is. He's a guy who actually catches the football. Uh, it's a rare rarity for this Eagles receiver. Yeah, court. and this week I decided for my receivers I would try to get um, only receivers who have good quarterbacks. So I, I you know, like Greg, Greg Water been tough. Carson Wentz, he's now is a bottom ten, bottom ten quarterback. I'm sticking to it. Who's your third receiver, Sean? I can't stand this criticism anymore. I'm unveiling it. I'm wearing the Carson Wentz jersey. Oh wow, what is this? Are we bringing the heat? I won't be here for the periscope back, going back, out of town. Back to back wardrobe changes on the show. I've I've had enough, Ryan. I've had enough of you talking shit. I've had enough of everyone talking shit uh -oh. against Carson Wentz. Yeah, the guys had a couple bad games. Does that mean I'm going to abandon Carson Wentz? I took down the fathead. You know why? No, Ryan? you didn't. Yeah, I did. Because, oh and I'll tell you why. I realized I was making the guy out to be a god, and Carson Wentz, <laughs> he's a man. He's a man just like any one of us, Ryan, and he's a religious man. What's one of the Ten Commandments? Thou shalt not worship false gods. We're putting this guy up on a pedestal. It's time to treat him like a man, and this man is about to man up in a big fucking way this week against the Miami Dolphins and their horrific defense. Everyone else can hate on Carson Wentz. It's time for me to support Carson Wentz. Yeah, he hasn't had some good games. Yeah, he's looked like dog shit. Yeah, he was overthrowing people on screens. 
Does that mean he's a horrible quarterback? No, you can have bad games and still be a good quarterback. It's time for Carson Wentz and this Philadelphia Eagles team to rally. Go into Miami, beat him. Go back at home Monday night, beat the New York Giants. I think they can do that. Next up, the Washington Redskins. You don't think we can beat the Redskins? We may suck, but we can beat the Washington Redskins. Then the Dallas Cowboys. Hey, those guys explain themselves. Dallas Cowboys on the road. Jason Garrett in December. We're coming for you. And lastly, the icing on the cake that will get them into the playoffs, defeating the New York Giants once again. A 5 0 run to reestablish Carson Wentz as the franchise quarterback he is. Yeah, I mean, McCown owns the Giants, so that'll be good. I mean, Carson Wentz not, is not finishing the season, Sean. D.D. Westbrook. <laughs> Only $5,000 at home against this Tampa Bay Bucks mm. defense. Again, quietly still horrible. Uh, Chark seemingly was uh, kind of Foles' guy, but now Westbrook came in, nine targets, 69 yards. I, I think he could have the breakout game, and he's a lot cheaper than Chark. If you look at the price point, DJ Chark is 6,600. DD Westbrook only five thousand dollars. I, I think that's a nice value uh, for the Jags and and DFS man. So, give me DD Westbrook. Well, tight end. Let's get back on that wagon. Arizona, who they got this week? Sean, the Los Angeles Rams. A little concerned here because Everett is banged up. That's all right. Everett's 4,600. If we have to, we pivot down to Tyler Higby, who's coming off a nice six target game. I think, uh, I think he did most of that damage once Everett left the, left the game. Clearly McVay is focused on getting the tight end bo more, the ball more this year. And I'm just going to continue to play the trend, uh, of fading Arizona. I think they're still, I think they're still averaging, giving up a touchdown a week. That's yeah, insane. It's horrific. And it, it's really. 21 I, point. I'll, I'll pull it's up an the anomaly. I think it's 21 point points a game. They're giving up to the tight end for my tight end. I went to uh favorite receiver of one Carson Wentz, Zach Ertz oh. against this Miami team. The target share alone is just insane. Coming off a 14 target, 12 reception game, got the garbage touchdown at the end. Uh, they should be able to move the ball against this Miami secondary, which is just completely decimated. They're not really trotting out a real team. And uh, at sixty seven hundred dollars for the amount of targets he's going to get, I, I think it's a steal, honestly. So yeah, give me Zach Ertz. The Arizona Cardinals in eleven games have given up seventy catches on ninety two targets <laughs> for eight hundred and forty six yards and twelve touchdowns to the tight end. They're averaging more than one touchdown a game. That equates to twenty one point four points per game. That's insane. Standard PPR scoring, DraftKings scoring. All right, so we went over it or Higby there. Back to me in the flex. I think you're being an idiot not playing that trend, Sean. But good luck with uh, Mr. Ertz. I told you it was a great play earlier. Benny Snell is in my flex spot for 4,700. I I love this spot. They clearly liked him a lot. It sounds like Connor's going to be out again, and he. He passes the eye test. He looks good. He yeah. looked good down there in Kentucky in college. He he looks the part of a in, in a lot of ways he looks better than Connor. He just looks like a NFL running back. He runs with his shoulders square and low. I like I like it. I think they're gonna lean on him heavy here because Duck is the starter. Quack, 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 Mr. Ducks. I just watched uh, the Mighty Ducks over the weekend. It was I uh, love that movie. Uh Benny Snell, forty seven hundred. Benny Snell. All right. Here's what I did. Kramer. I actually did uh, play that trend and I put Tyler Higby in my flex spot, oh. running some 12 personnel, $2,500. Everything I'm hearing is that Higby will be the guy this week against Arizona. Again, we're taping this Tuesday evening, but uh, stuff might change. I am definitely going to figure out a way to uh, get the air, uh, the Rams tight end into my lineup. If it means, Everett and then uh you know putting Everett in the flex and maybe knocking down some of the other guys I'll figure it out but uh yeah as constructed give me Higby $2,500 this is a guy that could win you the millionaire maker glad we got that on video I only had 1900 remaining and that gave me two options Sean mm. the New York Giants unfortunately I didn't have enough to play the Miami Dolphins because that's a nice punt price of 2100 against Carson Wentz in that offense right now 
the New York Giants or the Oakland Raiders, only one of these teams is playing in their Super Bowl this week, and that's the Oakland Raiders coming off an embarrassing loss on the East Coast. Now they're heading to Kansas City for uh, – essentially, this is their season. They lose this game. They go away quietly. They win this game. They are very much alive. John Gruden gets mad. I don't know. I'm selling. I'm selling the cheapest. We gotta get our shit going, man. Seventeen hundred. Give me the Raiders. They get a couple sacks in Mahomes. Yeah, I mean, and maybe I'll end up having to go down there if you know, figuring out the the Everett guy and the and the tight end and flex combo here. I had a little bit more cash. I went with the Ravens defense at home against San Francisco. I don't, I, mean, I don't love it because I, I do think hmm. San Francisco will come in, maybe be able to move the ball, but the Ravens defense averaging 9.9 .9 fantasy points per game. Again, they're at home. Jimmy G has uh, shown some ability to turn the ball over and he's had moments where he hasn't looked great. I, he certainly looked awesome against the 49ers defense, but you look at him against the, the Cardinals. He's had some mistakes yep. against uh, Seattle. He certainly had some mistakes, some turnovers. You saw what the, what the Seattle defensive line was able to do pressure wise. And it does feel like the Ravens, since they got, uh, was it Peters in their backfield on that trade seemingly has, has kind of figured out the defensive side as well, because that was a big issue for the Ravens. Their defense was fraudulent. I'm like, Oh, it's not the same Ravens defense of old, but they've really, kind of figure Earl it Thomas out. now has t 11 games in the system yeah I mean, and maybe that's, that's it that. too like maybe Earl Thomas has a couple of big plays I think you could do worse and I don't know Jimmy G has not played well in tight games I mean that no that, he's I, I shouldn't say that he's shown vulnerability in tight games at least for sure he hasn't been tested a lot I was surprised you didn't go Kansas City there similar price point D Derek Carr and this 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 Raiders team. I mean I that Kansas City defense though yeah, I hear you. Can you really spags, spags baby? <laughs> Never forget. Never uh, I forget would much game. rather take. Yeah, I'm just you know. I'm he literally him. is still working because he beat an undefeated Patriots team <laughs> 12 years ago. It's a good. Uh, it's a good run to have. All right, Ryan. let's go, Sean. We're let's on the clock. It. We, you know, we got to be out of here soon. Do we? Uh, you know, we 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 can't pay for the studio all night. All right, rent's not cheap. <laughs> Rent's free, Ryan. Rent is free. So we're done with the podcast, right? No, we're not. Oh. We're about to uh, move over to the recap portion of the NFL podcast. Right? But before we do that, we're talking about making rent. What better way to make rent than opening up your own business? Getting a little side hustle. You know, getting that side hustle turns into your main hustle. You've heard that expression before. I know what it's like to start a small business. Started one with uh, you, Ryan. It takes mm. a lot of hard work, but you want you want a small business where the odds are stacked in your favor. And what better business to start than be in your own sports book? 2020, that's the year you change your financial landscape and become your own bookie. And you can do that over at aceperhead.com slash SGP. I know what you're saying, Sean. I don't know how to set up a website. I barely know how to use Google Drive. I'm an idiot. I can't attach files. I don't. I, oh, is this a zip or a wave file? I don't know what I'm doing. I'm completely lost. Don't worry. Aceperhead.com. They got you covered. I got to do aceperhead.com slash SGP. They get you set up. They get you going with your own custom sportsbook website. They come up with all the lines. They grade the lines 24 seven customer service. They're going to take care of you. They're going to make it easy on you and some of the sharpest lines in the business so you don't get murdered. What more do you want? Ace per head, one of the leader, one of the leading pay per head providers. Best part, if you go through aceperhead.com slash SGP, you can get up to six weeks free. That's right. Six weeks free just for hanging out with the good pals over at Ace per head. Aceperhead.com slash SGP. Okay, Kramer, let's do it. Rapid fire recap. Uh, my pick sucked. Nothing to see here. You hit your dog and your lock. <laughs> really regret it now. So gross, too. I had the Jets and the Titans. <laughs> and it was so easy. I, I know. Honestly, it was a rare weekend where I didn't I I didn't go crazy. I did I did lose on, on the Saints. I actually I played a bunch of teasers with the Saints and it that pissed me off. But Having the two big bets for the day just cash in the first half, easy. Pe it's third, all downhill in from Tennessee. There. I guess it was the third quarter there, but 
Yeah. Uh, what are we doing here? All right. Rapid fire recap. I, I wish I would have made the Colts my lock, as I always do. I love locking up the Colts. Didn't disappoint me. They did disappoint me as a dog, uh, 17 to 20. They covered the number four and a half, three, depending on when you bet it. You were on the Texans. It just felt like a classic. Why are they getting three points? Yep. And that was that was the key number, and that's all that mattered. Frank Wright kind of disappointing with some of his play calling. Brissett still seems a little banged up, but they got the running game going. They had their opportunities, but uh, Deshaun Watson just hit a couple big ones, and that was the difference. Yeah, the difference was Watson. Watson in prime time, man. Just takes care of business. Didn't cover, though, like a bitch. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. All right. What else? Again, rapid fire, Ryan. That's why we call it rapid fire. Miami Dolphins had them catching the big number, 10 and a half, 11. It was too big for this Cleveland Browns juggernaut. I I really, this is one of those picks, and I don't say this often. I would have probably switched it if we would have picked it later on in the week. Oh. Because all this news came out about them sitting guys and guys not traveling with them in the defensive secondary. And that was like a bit of a red flag. I did like Jarvis Landry in DFS. He had a huge game. Um, so they, but also they were in that mix. I know uh, the back door was coming until that last pick. Yeah. I know our boy uh, on Twitter at 40 something pod hit us up with the, uh, <laughs> the Miami tees at 17 and a half. Never oh, in no. doubt. No, <laughs> Which that was a, it's a nice little hit there. If you're a uh, nice you're, sweat for sure. Buffalo Bills, 20. Denver Broncos, 3. Again, we were both right with the Bills. Again, kick myself. I like this Bills team. Yeah. Secretly kind of good. Everyone keeps doubting them. I, I thought Broncos would be able to keep it a little close with Lindsey. I thought they'd be able to do a little bit more in the rushing game. But we also threw this out when we talked about it. Classic dream crusher potential for them. That game against the Vikings had to be deflating. And this Bills team at home back-to-back -back road games we we thought we might see brandon allen get exposed in minnesota it took one more week until buffalo so i mean it, it makes sense in hindsight yeah in hindsight that could have had some lock potential missed out on that oh what a horrible break pittsburgh steelers 16 cincinnati Bengals 10 you were on the Bengals, ryan correctly i had the steelers and god damn it as soon as they put duck hodges in i've been calling for duck all past few weeks wouldn't put him in as soon as they do drives him down the field Some james guys washington are just gamers you know and james washington with just a fucking baller ass stiff arm and then this is oh god probably i wouldn't say it was a bad beat per se because pittsburgh was behind a, a lot of the game so it's tough for me to bitch that much but i'll, I'll make my case for bitching you bitch pretty hard well, in the moment when Pittsburgh, they strip sack Finley, they get the ball in the 20. All they need to do is kick a field goal and kicking the field goal also makes strategic sense. You kick a field goal there at the end of the game. It's a two score game. You win the game. Instead, worst case scenario, they run the ball sweep. I, actually, the first uh, first down play, they don't get anything. I'm like, OK, this is good. Only a couple minutes left. And then Snell breaks it off. I, there's a moment where it's like, oh, my God, he's going to get the touchdown. Nope tackled at the six and then they're able to kneel it out so you got the cover bad beat that and the Patriots game which we'll get to in a second but uh horrific another another one here I was on the Bears minus six you had the Giants yep. plus six never another a doubt. never a another doubt. pick I lost by a point and the other ones were a half a point the Bears weren't the right side of this though yeah mm. I don't know how, how did the Bears get 19 I forget did they miss a two-point conversion or there were some point? missed extra points there so <laughs> there was something in there oh the missed extra point come on when you're fading the Giants it's always the right side Kramer and you you'll you'll assume this is a troll but no you're trolling what is wrong with our boy Saquads oh, what well, has happened to the alien DNA past three games a combined 88 yards is it a high ankle sprain are I don't we know he, are he we said he was just gonna go out there and ball I don't yeah. know maybe that means be incredibly mediocre or maybe he's like you know we could use a nice offensive lineman <laughs> there's no value in trying hard right now I, I don't know it's been weird I think I think what happens is teams just load up and that offensive line's trash I think when you pay a left tackle a bunch of money he can't block uh, the fact that they haven't benched him yet is remarkable I'm blaming the offensive line, Sean. Still sucks. Still sucks. Let's go. Move on. Meanwhile, we've been talking three in a row I got right here. Three in a row. You're getting hot, Ryan. Getting hot. Oh, hot, 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 hot. Hot, 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 hot. 
You, of course, nailed this game. Jets 34, Raiders 3. I, I got cute. I took the Raiders. I just cannot figure this Raiders team out when they'll show up, when they won't. Sammy D is just slinging the rock, was seen making out with a chick after the game. That's pretty interesting when uh, early in the season, it's quite the whirlwind for Sam Darnold. Yep. Early in the season, diagnosed with mono, not a, a mere six games later, making out with chicks on page six. <laughs> Old habits die hard, John. And what. what Colby, I love the database, but what has to happen for this guy to actually watch his Jets team? The guy that called me out claiming he's watched more NFL games than me. He doesn't even watch his own team. The Jets, the Jets are finally getting interesting. Oh. One, three games in a row, 34 points. Yeah. Sam Darnold looks like a real quarterback, even with Adam Gase, who's not a great coach. They've scored 102 points. If my math serves me correct. exactly 34 each game. Which is like a crazy over, the, over that same stretch. The Patriots have fifty. <laughs> the entire month of November, the Patriots fifty points, four and zero, right, or something like that. So, uh, yeah, the Jets. I mean, it's a baby fucking wheel, man. R real quick, I know we're trying to do this quick, Sean, but have you looked at the Jets' schedule? Lay it out for me. Give me the Jets' case for making the playoffs, Ryan. Well, they play the Bengals, then they play the Dolphins, then they have a tough game against the Ravens then they're home for the Steelers and at the bills. These are all like none of these games with the exception of the Ravens are, are not winnable games. They, they may even be favored in three of them or they certainly will be favored in three of them. Yeah. I mean, Adam Gase, I they're think four still, and seven Adam, still is a liability. I, I, the AFC is weak. I don't think they're going to get there, but if I'm a Jets fan, I'm at least excited. I mean, yeah, your the, the the news. Your quarterback is scoring points, and your defense looks good. C.J. Mosley isn't even playing. If C.J. Mosley gets back, uh, that linebacker core would look a lot better. Tough Jamal to Jamal Adams, legit like top ten player. Yep. And uh, the Pats sixty seven points in the month of November three and one. They, they lost the. The tough part is the Jets have four of their wins have come against the, the Giants, Cowboys, and Redskins. So. And that is comically <laughs> that could be the decider in the uh, Eagles uh, Cowboys race for way. the <laughs> NFC East because it could come down to common opponents and the Cowboys lost to the Jets and the Eagles beat the Jets. So, all right, let's go, go Jets. Sean. Rapid. You, you kept saying rapid. You interrupted me. To move me. Fast. Rapid 34 recap. Panthers 31. I think we we're both off on this. I, I thought this was a get right game for the Saints. It was for their offense. It wasn't for their defense. I I don't know what happened to this crazy defense that we saw earlier in the season. They just seem to be taking plays off. They're not getting the same pass rush, not creating those turnovers that they had. So earlier uh, in the year, maybe last week, two weeks ago, we discussed how the, they probably wouldn't overturn the pass interference in the playoff game for the saints. <laughs> and in this oh, game, man, what this happens? Is such sweet justice. They overturn. I mean, honestly, that was a bad call. That was a bad call. I mean, I don't think they should have overturned it, let alone they're not overturning anything. Crazy no. call. I, this Saints team, I got to be honest, they're really creeping up there in terms of teams that are very easy to hate. Very easy to hate this team. Well, and it's and it, very easy to root against them because, God, <laughs> like I don't want to have – Their fan base is super annoying. I don't want to have Saints money line in my pocket anymore when they're laying nine and a half. I don't want to be involved in that because it's too fun to watch Drew Brees flounder. It's too it's too fun to watch Sean Payton look like a confused retard who can't find his fucking asshole. <laughs> he uh, they he is the he's a fellow chaw dog, Ryan, so I have to respect him for that. <laughs> okay, you can respect him for that, but I, this Saints team, I know we have n the Niners in the let's fade them when they make the playoffs bucket. Yeah. And we can probably put the the Texans in there too. So who's the best team in the NFC right now? But it's, it's wild. Who would you go with? I'm going to say something controversial here. Mm. I want to fade this Saints team when they make the playoffs. I don't think they're that good. I think they were hot early. I think Bridgewater came in and held it down with the defense. But this defense, as this defense fades, I think it's going to be a serious problem. Well, so. especially if they have to go on the road. And that could be yeah. interesting. What if the Saints go against the 49ers in the, in the playoffs? In San Francisco, oh, what are you doing uh, there? I might take the Saints because of experience, but I hear I what you're if, saying. I don't know if Jimmy G's making it that far. Yeah, we haven't seen him play enough competitive games. Rapid fire recap. Atlanta Falcons 22, Bucks 35. Our Bucks, when we finally said it was time to let them go, that's when they come right back. They sucked us, right? <sighs> they bucked us. 
the yeah. Tampa Bay Bucks. You can't get a handle on this team. I'm sorry. I did have Godwin in the DFS lineup that uh, cashed the millionaire maker. But other than that, this uh, this Tampa team <laughs> and Atlanta, are... Atlanta, their two game. No one believes in us. We're rallying against Dan Quinn. Journey comes to a comical end. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. The highlight saying. of the game was in the press conference when uh, they asked Bruce Arians, "Are you a glass half full guy?" Or a glass half empty guy, and he said, "I'm a glass full guy, and it's about to be real full." So, uh, salute to you there, Bruce Arians, and uh, hopefully you got a nice glass of Jameson. Yeah, I, I've, I've shared this I think before. Sources close to the situation: Bruce Arians enjoys a cocktail at oh, all yeah. hours. Put a little paint thinner in there <laughs> at all hours. Spike it a little bit. Detroit Lions 16, the Redskins, aka Deadskins 19. Bruce hat or Bruce uh, Haskins gets his first victory. Uh, the Driscoll experiment ends. We should have we should have seen this coming, Ryan. Everyone and their mom was on Detroit minus three and a half. A staggering amount of money on Jeff Driscoll as a road favorite. We said that was the problem, and we were going back and forth between him as a road favorite or Haskins at home or just Haskins in general. It, we almost we almost got it right. Detroit had a couple chances there, but uh, you know, and in the and the. Redskins defense, I guess, has a couple moments, but man, there is no hope in uh, hope for the Redskins. There, I mean, would you rather be a Redskins fan or a Giants fan, Ryan? <laughs> I know you're biased because you're a Giants fan. I, uh, I mean, I think the uh, the Giants ownership slight nod over the. Uh, uh, but you got to the say their their interest in Jason Garrett is definitely tipping the scales. <laughs> there is making Dan Snyder look like a good owner. Uh, you know, I, I'm, 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 I'm definitely taking a, I'm scouting West coast teams, Philadelphia Eagles, nine Seattle Seahawks, 17 a horrific game for the Eagles defensive side of the ball did what they're supposed to do. Uh, controlled Russell Wilson, six sacks, bunch of turnovers, even some, uh, on the other side of the field and, uh, just a big collapse on the offensive side of the ball. Carson Wentz certainly deserves a ton of criticism that he's been getting, um, but I mean, you have to, uh, Lane Johnson didn't uh, play. They, they had the rookie uh, try him at right tackle. That was a disaster. He couldn't figure out the kind of being backwards there. Then Brandon Brooks, who was po poss possibly their best offensive player, a uh, legit case of being all pro guard position. He, uh, had an anxiety attack. And uh, couldn't couldn't play the game. You think you have anxiety playing the game? Try being a fan, Brandon. All right, try watching this game. Get yourself a lipper. Get yourself a little bit of Jameson. Get some chips. You know, power through that anxiety. All right. You think you're nervous or or anxiety filled? Imagine being on the other side. I can't do anything. You can go out there and push guys around. And of course, Alshon Jeffrey didn't play. Nelson Aguilar didn't play. So. Uh, you're missing Jordan Howard, who has been when their offense has looked good. A lot of it's been because Jordan Howard's been playing well. So plenty of excuses to go around, but uh, just a big no show by the offense. One thing I do know, a hungry dog's not going to get fed laying down on the porch, Sean. Oh, wow. That so. is uh, that is sad, Ryan. Well, as it said I, in the locker room up there in Washington State, an interested person talks about things. A committed person shows you. Well, you're either coaching it or you're allowing it to happen. Oh, there we go. <laughs> and Doug Peterson is allowing a lot of fucking bullshit to happen. Doug P. He's got a lot. He's he's got a long leash because of the Super Bowl. But dude, you need to go in there and and get something out of these guys. Draw some plays up. Better I mean, coach Sean McVay or Doug Peterson at this point. Well, imagine <laughs> the Rams are like the Eagles without the Super Bowl win. It's true. And I. I I mean, that's a huge difference. right Does now. Doug P have a nice big coaching tree like Sean McVay? Well, that's the thing. Like Doug P has not get, been getting nearly the hype that Sean McVay has. Uh, and, and he certainly had a disappointing year coaching wise. I think uh, they just promoted within for the offensive coordinator position, which I think was a huge mix mistake. I don't think uh, Mike Grove will be back as offensive coordinator next year. Yeah. Uh, son of the great Al Grove of UVA fame. So who, that, who, uh, that, that Who, was never going to work. Well, yeah. And you know, uh, breaking news, Al Groh fired his son, Mike Groh. So that should have been a red flag. When it, on your resume, it says fired by my dad. Like, come on, dude. We got to get our shit going mentally. Rapid fire recap. Tennessee Titans, 42. Jags, 20. God hates Jags again. 
and the Tennessee Titans, the revamped offense. I had a, I, I did a bonus lineup, which had uh, Derrick Henry in there because of this Jags. I thought it was just the run defense that sucked for the Jags, but turns out it's the entire defense, Tannehill, two rushing touchdowns, fantasy darling, Ryan Tannehill. We're I living mean, in strange times, represent, uh, unlike Ryan Finley, Ryan Tannehill representing the name Ryan much better than when he did not know which direction the sun set. Or is that Jared? Goff? That's Jared. Goff. One of those. Oh, no. He didn't know the teams in his own division. That's what Ryan <laughs> Tannehill didn't know. Uh, yeah, just play, can, can you give me some love? Maybe a cash register, maybe a, uh, a three lock salute. This was never in doubt. Never and in doubt. The Titans are now above water. So we know what, what happens next. Hashtag tighten up. Patriots 13, uh, Cowboys 9. It's a baby fucking wheel, man. Ugly, ugly game. Of course, Jason Garrett kicks that stupid field goal towards the end of the game uh, to cut it within four. Even though they barely got into the red zone all game, you know it's going to be so hard to get down there again. Just fucking go for it, you pussy. Well, it's and then still the a Patriots... one-score game that isn't a field goal. Yeah, and then the Patriots... Uh, don't kick the field goal on the other end when they're running it out. The spread was six and a half, which wouldn't have mattered, but I actually bet it. The line moved down to like four and a half. Just a nightmare scenario. Again, another game where I miss it by like half a point. So kudos to me for finding all these close losses. How, how, how does Jerry, what is Jerry Jones going to do next? Jerry Jones. And this is what I don't get. You're not going to fire. You're not going to fire Jason Garrett this week. Right? So like, why take him and throw him onto the bus? You're still, you're still in first place for the NFC East. Why create all this added controversy? You know, you should know that he sucks by now. What are you doing? Riding out the rest of the contract, I guess. Indeed. Green Bay Packers, eight 49ers, 37 off a of buy off a of buy. And I think we get, we have to factor in almost a buy. And maybe this is just the new way the league is going with uh, everyone being high flying offenses and, you know, being in timing and, and not oh. getting work on the buy. I think the buy quietly is working against teams. We've seen teams, even the, even the Seahawks came out and pretty flat on offense. And I, I think in a weird way, the buy is possibly hurting teams. These young coaches, they don't know how to coach the buy like Andy Reid. Well, they used to, I mean, I think they just give the guys off, but uh, whatever's been happening recently, I don't think teams coming off a of buy has been a good look. Yeah. I should be tracking that. Yeah, you have it listed up here in the spreadsheet, Ryan, but you don't have any of the numbers. A lot of ins, a lot of outs. Final game of the week, Baltimore Ravens 45, Rams 6. One of my rare victories here. Hit some sweet props. Ravens just came in and ran buckshot on this uh, very fraudulent Los Angeles Rams team. As as Booger said, they're Melrose Place, and the Ravens, they're the wire. Oh wow, that's which if Booger was white, I feel like there would be a protest or something. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, listen, people don't like Booger. Not nothing to do with his skin color. I promise you that. No, but I'm saying. No, I hear you. I hear comparing you. that I hear or it, quietly, him and Bill Polian both said Lamar Jackson shouldn't be playing quarterback and should be playing receiver. There, there were a lot of people. That Bill said Polian, uh, I think, getting way more heat than uh, Booger McFarland. Well. One's just a brother saying it and saying something to another brother, Sean. <laughs> I'm a fun guy. <laughs> I am a fun guy, Ryan. And you know what uh, being fun is all about? Having sex. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sex is awesome. Confirmed. Confirmed. Ryan, he's a sex advocate, sex machine. And when you're having sex. You want to be clean down there. You want to polish those family jewels. You don't want to show off some uncut diamonds. It's much like a great meal. You're going to be enjoying Thanksgiving dinner. A lot of it is about the presentation, the plating. Before you're going to have a a, a big meal, you want to look at it and, and go, wow, that looks delicious. You want to make it as appealing as possible. The same can be uh, said for presenting yourself to your partner, Ryan. You want to make it as appeasing as has uh, appealing appealing losing my mind here as appealing as possible trim the hedges and do it with manscape manscape.com slash sgp or sorry promo code sgp 20 percent off and free shipping on uh, manscape.com materials products 
They got the crop preserver. I use that. It's anti-chafing ball deodorant and moisturizer. I, I, I don't put deodorant on my armpits. You know why? I don't want anyone touching my armpits, all right? I do want someone touching my balls. Of course, my wife. 85% of women think bad grooming major turnoff, according to Dr. Drew. 80% of women think men should manscape below the belt, according to independent study. Let's be honest. Women like a guy who takes care of his shit. Whether it comes to paying your bills, having a job, uh, putting gas in your truck, or not being a complete mess down there. Women want a guy who is well put together. Show your women you can have your shit together. Using that lawnmower 2.0, way better than the original lawnmower. No issues with the bagging. You don't have to get out there with the cord and restart it. Again, all this great ball related products can be purchased over at manscaped.com. Promo code SGP, manscaped.com. Promo code SGP, 20% off and free shipping. It doesn't get any better, Ryan. It's, you know, a lot like play, win, get paid. Just you want you want balls simple you want balls to enter a mouth. Just take care of that. It's simple. Oh, <laughs> uh, that is a. Uh, and, and secondly, listen, listen, young fellas. I'm listening. You're not. A, I'm not talking to you. So. He's one of those guys who will get penetration. But for it's those, Madden's, I I I almost want Madden on the Telestrator <laughs> drawing up how to use the lawnmower 2.0. Oh. You got a zig over here, then yeah. the oh hey you go right here. I'm sure Caliendo is available. <laughs> uh, for for those young fellows who are thinking like, yeah, I'm gonna hit Thanksgiving with the family, and then I'm gonna go out and try to like hit, hit the club. I know it's a good, it's a big like come home bar night. Yeah, well, Wednesday is not sure. Wh- whatever, but both nights I think people go out. At least we did. Listen, there's no point in trying to trying to hook up on Thanksgiving. Enjoy the meal. <laughs> yeah. Don't enjoy the 2 a.m. shit. Just don't, just don't 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 overextend yourself. And, and to that same point, no Ryan, one wants to be so relaxed that things get weird, right? <laughs> the man's the, the the lawnmower can't fix that. <laughs> and to that point, uh, I know I haven't been married for a long time, but I think a whether you're married or in some sort of long term relationship, when you're getting ready for date night, you're going to go out for a yep. big meal, and this kind of applies to Thanksgiving as well. Have sex before you go out for dinner. I can't stress that enough because then you don't have to worry about like, oh, I've ate too much or, oh, should I get that espresso? That's going to be a nightmare. And, and again, I'm a steak guy, so I want to be able mm-hmm. to have sex, get no. the get the endorphins going, the testosterone. Yep. My tea is at all times level, <laughs> all time high, and I can just chew into a ribeye, eat, eat till my heart's content and not have to worry about, oh, I got a full stomach. Yeah. It's going to impact your meat thrusting. for dinner and meat for dessert. But again, if you're new in a relationship, <laughs> you have to wine and dine and then try and get laid. But when it's uh, when date night is just a matter of it's a formality. You know, if you're in a decent <laughs> relationship, hey, OK, taking ads, we're going to get laid. <laughs> have sex. I can't trust this enough. Have sex <laughs> before you go out. Then it feels yeah. like a celebration. Yeah, and honestly, another side, Keys to of, victory. another positive side effect of the plant-based diet. No, no <laughs> possible chance of eating so much that you don't feel good later. You can only eat so much quinoa, Sean. I, I've tapped out. Are we? Are we going quinoa. forward? Are we ready? I'm ready, right? Thursday, Thanksgiving, a traditional like none other. The 9:30 a.m. kickoff here on the West Coast. Chicago, the Bears. They head to Detroit, where we don't know who's starting. Uh, we don't know who's finishing. Uh, we know Trubisky will be there, and he, we know that Trubisky's a three-point road favorite, minus 175, plus 150 on the money line for the Lions. 38.5 is the total. The look ahead was Lions minus 1.5. This surely has Still to, value. St- surely has to point to the fact that Driscoll's probably out. Um, you got to get down on this over at mybookie.ag. Mm. Sean, how, how, how much? What's the what's up to two hundred fifty dollars? What's the free bet? So for my free bet, I give me the favorite. I I I I think I'm gonna be playing favorites on Thanksgiving this year. I think I'm thankful for favorites. I think the spread mattered a little too much last week. I think five or six times the spread mattered. Uh, this week maybe it matters a bit less. I don't see this. This, this is just not a game that Detroit. Chicago is still in the mix. Like, have you looked at the standings? It's crazy, and uh, they are somehow in the mix, 
And if they win this game to get to six and six, they still have to, they have to do, do some things. And yes, Mitchell Trubisky is still their quarterback, but I don't know. This Packers team just got their ass kicked. The Vikings still have Kirk cousins. Stranger things can happen. I think they roll here. Yeah. I mean, at least the, the bear season has kind of been a disaster. They have the coaching edge too, which is not, not often you say that about Nagy <laughs> at this point, coach of the year last year, right? Yeah, man, it is, it has been a, uh, it's been a bad look for a coach of the years, right? I mean, I'm going to look it up, but I, I remember it being who, who have been some of the recent coach of the years. Well, Sean McVay, right? Uh, that's, not, that's not looking that good. No, I'll, I'll, I'll pull this up in a second. Um, well, about the playoff run, they have no fucking chance to make a playoff. Yeah, so Matt Nagy, Sean McVay, Jason Garrett, and Ron Rivera. <laughs> wow, all of those, no, all those guys oh on the hot God. seat. Oh my God! Well, maybe not McVay, but yeah, McVay they can't hire, uh, they can't fire him. But everyone else could get fired after this season. Kind of insane. Yeah, the Bears defense against a third string quarterback, that's pretty easy. I, again, like I they said, they have to get up for that, right? They have to get up for that. David Blow, 13 and 23 <laughs> at Purdue. There were, every year I read his bio Is that, is and that how you say his name? It's B L O U G H. Is it Blau? Blau, probably. Or, or is Blow. it Bluff? Like rough. <laughs> I think it should be like Doe and Blow. Oh, Doe. Oh. It's you're probably right. It's like probably Blau. I read his bio Bluff. every year. He was, <laughs> he was battling it out for possibly starting at Purdue. He's not good. Trubisky has moments where he's looked okay. Um, All right. So here's what we have to decide. Do we want to back a guy who's not good enough to beat out Driscoll? Who has not looked great. Just lost to the Redskins or, or this could be a big game for the Lions, right? This is their big national TV spot. No. Or do we want to lay points with Trubisky on the road? I, I really think, yeah. And it, it's an ugly thing. And maybe you could say, well, isn't that similar to Trubisky or to Driscoll laying points on the road? I, I think Trubisky is better than Driscoll. I think Matt Patricia has truly lost this team. And uh, he just has, right? Like, how can you see this team getting motivated at all to play for him? I just don't see it. A lot of money on the Bears, 80%. It's driven the line from, I think this opened around a pick to now minus three. Doesn't matter. I'm on the Bears. Let's do it. I, I Rock think it. Bears defense has potential to score. Bears defense outscores the Lions. Yeah, and, uh, and I did some of those uh, DraftKings lineups. They have some, like, free ones going as well for, like, the showdown yeah, captain mode. I, I did one of those. And I did one where I threw the Bears Bears D is as my the captain. captain. Yep. Yeah. We're lockstep. We mu it must be a super square play. Oh, I'm sure it is. Buffalo heads to Dallas for the 130 West Coast kick. Dallas is laying a full touchdown, minus 300 on the money line. Buffalo plus 250. 46 is the total. God damn it. This is tough for me. Really? Yeah, because I, I think we, we've we overreacted to Buffalo looking good at home, and then they go to the road, they take to the road, and they're just not the same team. At the same time, Dallas is a much better team at home. They're going to get back to the running game, and they just played one of the best teams in the league. I told you I like the favorites today. I wish this was six and a half. Can we get a ruling? What What's the current line, Sean? Uh, let's call it seven because <laughs> I'm taking the Bills. Cole Beasley revenge game. Oh, stop. The it. Bills running defense has actually been pretty decent. Um, it's six and a half right now, but we can leave it. seven. yeah, we already wrote the sheet. <laughs> Bills running defense has been bad overall, uh, but recently 85 yards per game over the last three games. And they went up against decent running backs. Philip Lindsay, Royce Freeman. Jerry Jones throwing the coach under the bus publicly, making the whole huge thing, pointing out special teams is just coaching. They're going to be a disaster. And I've traditionally had a very good run picking games against the spread on Thanksgiving. Oh, wow. Okay. I've had a couple, a couple Thanksgivings where I've cleared the slate, gone three and oh, and I'm looking back in my head. I'm like, what is it about these Thanksgiving games where I can really see the games? Well, well, you fade the Cowboys. <laughs> And I fade the Cowboys and the Cowboys since 2011, the Cowboys have gone one and seven against the spread in Thanksgiving games. I look for that tradition to continue. And again, the Cowboys also one and six against the spread in their past seven games against a team with the winning record, which the bills getting no respect uh, certainly are. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll just point out. I think, I think to me, this is a, a dangerous spot because I think a lot of people will, I think we're seeing right now, 70% of the tickets on the bills 
they, they uh, strange, right? Because a public dog against the Cowboys like that, I think that's probably why we've seen the number come down to six and a half. We're picking it at seven. Give me the Dallas Cowboys. I would just caution people like this Bills team. I think this is that classic spot. They look dominant at home against a shit quarterback. Now they're going on the road. Let's see how they deal with this running attack of the Dallas Cowboys. Night game, Sean. For some reason, we get to see New Orleans and Atlanta again on Thanksgiving. I, yeah. I don't know if we were thankful for that last year, uh, but Saints head to Atlanta where the Saints are seven point favorites, minus 300 on the money line. Atlanta plus 250. 49 is the total. This number's come up a point and a half from the look ahead after Atlanta went back into their crawl space. They're like the possum you had to deal with. They, you thought it was gone, <laughs> and then it's right back in there. Tricky bastard. Uh, it does feel a bit like New Orleans will have revenge on their minds, and we've seen tons of running backs have a lot of su success against this Falcons team. I, I, I'm going back to the stupid Saints favorite well just because I, I, this Atlanta team is trash. I, I do think that. Oh, geez. Yeah, I mean. Mm. Confirmed Atlanta trap. I, I, this needs to be seven and a half for me to take the Falcons. It's right on the edge. I, I don't know if I'm yeah, looking at Yeah, I mean, there, one, there's not amazing value. I keep going back and forth because this New Orleans team, the the their defense just isn't quite the same. But I do think this is a great revenge spot, right? They, they got worked yeah. at home against them. They got to take care They're of gonna that. They're going to get up for this game. Um there's a I, what else do I like about it? Uh, Alvin Kamara, he wasn't 100 percent last time they played. I think that was a huge factor. You've seen uh, all the points we brought up in the DFS portion of the podcast. Austin Hooper, Devonta Freeman, those guys are out. I just think Atlanta and Julio Jones is really banged up. I think this could be a get right game for the New Orleans defense, even though they've struggled as of late. Like, what is uh, Atlanta going to do skill position wise? And again, Sean Payton, 10 and four against the spread in season in same season revenge games. Last oh, but going not least, deep there. I like that. Last but not least, Atlanta offensive line, not as strong as they were these past couple games. I mean, the Tampa Bay Bucks, not a great defensive line. Uh, Shaq Barrett's had some moments, but especially earlier in the season, they really got some pressure on Matty Ice. I think, you know, again, not having Hooper, not having Freeman, not having Julio. It's just tough for them to find balance with their offense. 38-28 score. That's a, I'm predicting a high-scoring game. Like the, like the over here. I just told you I wasn't going to get stuck with any Saints money line action. Right. And can I get that charger off yeah, you? Yeah, we can do that. Uh, I, I just told you I wasn't going to put myself in a position to take the Saints as a money line. Uh, but now I'm looking at this Dallas-New Orleans teaser, and I'm really liking it. So we'll see. Stay, <laughs> oh, no. stay tuned. Ryan. Stay tuned. That is a disgusting act. Uh, again. I already... Now, this will not be officially a tease. Um, oh, what are you doing? What did I do? Did I actually put it in? Hold on. I'm looking up. I may have already put in my Thanksgiving Day tease, which I, or parlay, which I did, using some free play over at mybookie.ag. Bears money line, Bills seven and a half, mm. and New Orleans minus seven. $100 pays $401.78. Should I, should I do the same thing? Should we get it in? Well, it seemed like you like the Cowboys, Ryan. I don't well, know. Even I, though you I'm, pick Bills. No, no, no. I'm, I'm going to do my version of it. Oh, okay, yeah. Feel... Let's throw out a Thanksgiving, giving back to the fans. Oh, I'm just, it's, I'm just going to go chalk. Okay. Straight chalk. What are we putting on it? What, 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 what's the what's Yeah, $100. The way? 100 Yeah. So I, I, mine pays a 500 plus 568 for the Bears, Cowboys, and Saints. That's hmm. fun, right? Bears, Cowboys, and Saints. All right. And what are you doing? What are you doing action wise on that? Or maybe I do or do I do the teaser? Well, again, get us get us whatever you do, get us to four to one so you can match my hundred dollars to win four hundred one. I have a hundred to win five sixty eight. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm way ahead of you, bro. So you're taking Bears minus three. Yeah. All right. Let it rip. Let it rip. Fuck it. <laughs> Oh, all right. What's next? What's next, Ryan? Yeah, you're you're the one giving us Hold these. On, game I, I'm recaps. sorry, I got I got shut down. I got <laughs> I got to replace my bet. It, I'm actually I've gotten distracted placing a lot of this action over at I, my book. I was firing up the blackjack window. It's, it's all, a lot <laughs> place of your bets, please. All right, heading to Sunday. I will be back on the grid for this, Sean, and we will be doing a pregame periscope without Sean stacking the money green. Uh, we believe. 
Justin Decker will be in the house. 10 a.m. kick the Green Bay Packers and Aaron Rodgers head to New York to take on the New York Gi football Giants where the Packers are seven point favorites minus three. Every one of these money lines minus 300 on the money line for the favorite plus 250 for the Giants. 45 and a half is the total boy. Uh, I think I think we're going to see some numbers. I think I think the Giants are going to put some numbers up in this game, but but <laughs> Wait, on the offensive side of the ball. Yeah, yeah. I think I think it's going to be like 42 to 24. Uh, do we have weather before I sound like a complete idiot? I have not looked at the weather for forecast for this game. Aaron Rodgers, 29 and 15 against the spread after a loss, 11 and seven against the spread as a favorite of seven and a half or more. The peppers in in injury, I think really hurts them. R all right. 38 degrees with a chance of rain. Not much wind. Golden Tate. He's out with a concussion. <laughs> yeah, He's tough. I like that guy. I just don't see how the Giants are able to move the ball, even though the Green Bay doesn't have much of a defense. Uh, you, you know, hard. I, my instincts are like, no, take the Giants, dude. This is great. Everyone's betting the Packers. Why is the line not moving past seven? What's going? Ninety-seven percent of the ninety percent of the tickets are on the fucking Packers. Lay the points. Can't trust this defense right now. Devontae Adams, take the over props. Uh, Janoris Jenkins will have nothing to do with him. As you li heard previously on this episode, I took all three receivers in my DraftKings lineup. So, so you're locking up Green Bay minus seven, Kramer. Give me Green Bay minus seven. Washington heads to Carolina where the Panthers, and I'm, I'm, I'm feeling awful chalky, awful chalky today. Washington heads to Carolina where Carolina's a 10-point favorite, minus 470 on the money line. Washington plus 375. 40 is the total. Sean, this is ridiculous. You're telling me we get Dwayne Haskins coming off a win? <laughs> I know. And Carolina just just got they got they got the kicker fucked it for him. I don't love laying this many points with Kyle Allen, but like I said, there is a geo location rivalry, non divisional rivalry yeah. here. I think the Panthers are not going to want to do anything but to beat the shit out of the Washington Redskins. And oh, by the way, Josh Norman. Josh Norman, remember when he used to play for the Panthers? Is he a healthy now scratch? He is a punk ass bitch just playing special teams. So congratulations to you, Josh Norman. Lay the points, Carolina. Whoa, we are extra chalky right now. <clears throat> I did take Buffalo plus seven, Ryan. You have you've taken all favorites. I, I am extra chalky. It's gonna be hard to find a dog in this in this mess. San Francisco coming off that thumping of the Packers, they head to Baltimore where this has gone from four and a half on the look ahead, Sean, up to six, even after San Francisco. That's crazy. Blew that out that, the Packers. Yeah. I understand why you would move it maybe for the Ravens and, and Lamar, but my God, that is an insane, uh, that's an insane swing. And, and just to point out, I'm also on the Panthers minus 10 there. Oh. I am slightly worried about the Redskins ability to run the ball in the Panthers. Like maybe yeah, Darius what, guys has his come out game. I they, almost put him in my DFS lineup a, uh, P Panthers. Their defense has kind of been all over the place. I, I, that would be my concern that they run the ball just enough to keep them in the game. But again, I, I think Haskins turnovers are the difference in the spread and the game back to the Ravens 49ers way too much movement in the fact that the 49ers no respect for that game. And in a weird way, no. What? No respect. Oh, yeah. And in a weird way, uh, the 49ers kind of need this game more than the Ravens do. I I, I just kind of think the 49ers, they have to worry about Seattle nipping at their heels in that super competitive NFC West game. Interesting injury. Didn't get a lot of talk about it because he's a center and who cares? Lamar Jackson's fun. But the Baltimore center, Matt Skura, out for the season, got carted off in that game. I think that could be a difference. You talk about how awesome San Francisco's defensive line is, the interior pressure they create. I know I took Ravens defense in DFS. I think there's a chance this could be an ugly game. Kittle and Emmanuel Sanders are healthy for the 49ers. That seems to be a huge difference. Six points is just too much. I'm going to take the 49ers here. Is it too much, though? I, 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 San Francisco is on the road. San Francisco is in a non-conference spot. San Francisco has the Saints, the Rams, and the Seahawks coming up. Yeah, but Much I, more I think. Important game. But I think Baltimore again is there a bigger letdown spot for Baltimore? Short week, they were just out on the West Coast. You couldn't have a bigger letdown spot 
And they showed up in the tough spot, though. They showed up in the non-conference. They have. Spot. They have. I mean, they, they showed, showed up in, in division games where you think they shouldn't have. What's the stat on Harbaugh at home recently? I feel like they, that's the part we need to hone in on because they have not been that good at home covering spreads. And while I watch this Baltimore team and I, I don't really want to get in the way and I, I do worry about this San Francisco's elite defense, Sean, what, yeah. have, what have they done? Let's just pull up their schedule real quick. I don't want to spend too much time on this game, but this is probably the game of the week. Pull up that schedule and, and tell me if you see something. Tell me if you notice something when they play quarterbacks that can use their legs. They give up points. Okay. The Cardinals scored 25, 26. The Seahawks scored 27. That's the difference. You see the way they shut down every other team non-mobile quarterbacks they shut them down i agree with you that's an elite defense but when these mobile quarterbacks come out i, I mean i would have to imagine so they've given up 26 points per game but you got you got nick bosa you have this defense that is just playing out of their minds i i think uh i think they're going to be able to scheme up something that really is going to be tough for the ravens all right six I, points is too much for a team this good i hear you but it's jimmy g we haven't seen him in competitive games as I just pointed out, 78 of their 163 points given up this year, almost half of their points given up were in three games against quarterbacks that had a little wiggle. I'm rolling with that. I think Baltimore is just on a run right now, and it may come to an end in the playoffs because they play the wrong team. They play Belichick for a second time. But right now, I'm not get, I felt like a complete idiot being the contrarian last week with the Rams. I'm not going to do it this week. Mm. I'm going to stay chalky. Give me the Baltimore Ravens laying the six points. Wrong side of a touchdown, Sean. Wrong side of a touchdown. Tennessee heads to Indy. Where the, the, sorry, the six and five Tennessee Titans. They head to Hashtag Indy. Hashtag tighten up, and they coming, have. Coming off Thursday night where the look ahead was four and a half. It's now two and a half minus 140 on the money line. Tennessee plus 120, 43 and a half is the number. We might be double locking this. I assume you're also on Indy. Why is this not three? Why is it not three? Why is it not three? Tennessee, huge letdown spot. It's not a letdown spot. They just had a great game. Like we can't overreact. We can't push a look ahead from four and a half to two and a half based on Derrick Henry busting a 70 yard run. I get it. Tannehill looks great. He's way better than Mariota, and this team has it going, right? Colts All the have just owned them, too. 26 of the last 31 games. The AFC South is a complete clusterfuck, um, and it just, when in doubt, take the home team as far as winning the game. Uh, anything that's over three and a half in this AFC South, you, you have to, uh, and it's not. It's, it's under three. Well, you, that's why you lay. Right, exactly. T.Y. Hilton, he had a really bad game. Some uncharacteristic drops. He's coming back off injury. Now you get that Thursday rest. C perfect get-right game for T.Y. Hilton. Um, Brissett has a couple extra days to rest his ankle. And again, Colts have just dominated them. Uh, and, and they're at home. They're good at home. Tennessee also not familiar what to do as a winning team. So they're going to come back to 500 where they're comfortable. And for those Titans fans out there who want to talk shit, sure. Yes. I said they would be 5-11. and 11. They've <laughs> outperformed that. Congratulations. They lose this week. Lay the points with the Colts. Eagles head to Miami where the Eagles are a 9.5-point road favorite. Minus 450 on the money line. Dolphins plus 360. 44.5 is the total. Boy, oh boy, Sean. I am a little worried about this one. I'll tell you why. I don't, I don't know. What is this defense going to do in Miami? If they're celebrating touchdowns. Or celebrating interceptions down all those points. What are they going to do in Miami for this meaning meaningless non-conference road spot? I mean, it's <laughs> it's meaningful because it's their entire season, I know, I know. and they can't fuck it up. And I, I think they're going to be able to turn over Ryan Fitzpatrick. If anything can get this Eagles offense going, you would think it's going against this Miami secondary. There's going to be a ton of uh, coked out Eagles fans hanging out in the crowd. Maybe they're going to get them all jacked up. I think their defense really wins this game for them, puts them in a great spot to get some easy points and uh, and to roll against this. Will they have some receivers this week? Looks like Alshon decided to play. Hmm. Uh, Nelson Aguilar. I hope he doesn't play. He still is as questionable. I'm. I would really like them more if uh, Jordan Howard has been cleared, but he's still not cleared. So that's that's a little uh, curious for me. But uh, I can't take the Dolphins. I, I can't. I should have got off the Dolphins two weeks ago after they won those two straight games. What colored uniforms will the Eagles be wearing? I don't know that, Ryan, off the top of my head. 
Well, it, do we know what the weather's going to be like in Miami? Because when I see 80 degrees and humid, Sean, I hope they're not wearing those black jerseys. Sunday is going to be, what do we got? 80 here? degrees. 80 degrees, 50 per, 56% humidity. Ooh, that's going to be tough. I, I mean, you know, Fitzpatrick has that giant beard. He's going to be gonna sweating be his tough. ass off. I'm taking the better quarterback. Give me Ryan Fitzpatrick <laughs> and the Miami <laughs> Dolphins to cover this number. First dog I took all day. I can't quit this Dolphins team. I don't know. I know. I, I got to quit. Tampa him. heads to Jacksonville, another crappy team in Florida where the Jags are laying one point minus 115 on the Why do these teams have to play each other? Minus 105 for the Bucks. 48 I, and a half everyone, is the total. Everyone always says anytime it's like Titans, Colts, any any team like that, they go. Oh, don't they, didn't they just play? Don't they just always play each other? Oh, they're on Sunday night, no. Thursday night. I think what it is is every team in the AFC South just seems like the exact same team, right? Yeah. They all seem like carbon copies of each other. Well, they are. The Bucks are four and seven. Well, and they're not in the. <laughs> the Jags are four and seven, but the Tampa Bay Bucks almost feel like they belong in the AFC South. Yeah, they're. they're this is tough for me because we I just I last week it was like I gotta quit the Bucks and I, I quit the Bucks for a week and I saw that I could have had fun if I stayed on the Bucks. Yeah. N do we have FOMO because we missed out on the Bucks? Line open at Jags minus three and a half. That is a crazy amount of well, line. That's the movement. look at that's the look ahead. But yeah, right. still it's it's almost too much movement. And here it, it does concern me a little bit. The issue though is Foles needs a good offensive line to succeed. Right, you've seen Foles be really good and really horrible, and it's pretty easy. the The horrible and awesome splits are the offensive line. The year he had with Chip Kelly, they had a great offensive line. Lashawn McCoy led the league in rushing. They didn't know how to defend Chip Kelly's scheme. When he went on the run in 2017, same thing. All, you know, you had J, uh, yep. Big V was actually playing out of his mind at left tackle. Lane Johnson, like they just had Jason Kelsey was playing great. They had really good offensive line. Now he goes to Jacksonville and they just don't have a good offensive line. Jameis is kind of dialed in. And I, I think it's kind of a dream crusher angle for the Jags. Um, and I, and for whatever reason they're playing for, they're playing for Bruce Arians and they're playing for uh, our boy Jameis. And they have, they have Godwin. They have Mike Evans. Simple question. The Bucks can score 30 in this game. Can yeah. And Jag, I don't know if can the, the Jags, Jags score can. 30. No. And they both have horrible defenses. So I'll, I'll think the Bucks catching a point here. Yeah. And, 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 you know, if you want to have some fun, I think maybe the Ronald Jones props, but the way this Jags team has been defending the run jets head to Cincinnati where guess who's back, Sean, your second favorite quarterback with red hair, Andy Dalton. I just did a uh, podcast. Sorry, I love football podcast. Oh. Danny Solomon, okay. funny comedian, Chiefs fan. He had a line about Andy Dalton calling it the Red Dead Redemption. He's been <laughs> left for dead. <laughs> He's back. The Red Rifle is reloaded. Ryan Finley, rest in peace. Does feel like uh, we've been talking about relationships and how Manscaped can help your relationship. Mm -hmm. It is almost like the Bengals are like, hey, check out this young, hot, new chick. Checked it out for a... Uh, couple of weeks uh, hanging out hey you know it's kind of fun at first and then the super young chick uh you mentioned nirvana she has no idea what you're talking about and you're like i can't do this yeah yeah i mean they realize I'd rather well, go back to my loveless marriage that is andy dalton i think they realized that uh they had a serious chance to not win games and so they're like uh we better get dalton back in there to win a game or two cordy glenn offensive uh stud for the Bengals, is back to me, the interesting thing, and our boy uh, Walter Football pointed this out, with the announcement that Darnold came back, the line did not move. The line was steady. You mean Dalton? Sorry. Oh, yes. I don't know why I keep – oh, because he's playing this game. This is a megapod. It's draining me. But yeah, I'm doing it for the fans, right? We're Ryan. deep. Uh, what are you doing here? Because I, I want to take the bangles, but then I'm like, am I getting too cute? Where's the public at with this one? I'm guessing they're all over the Jets, right? I mean, the Jets have scored 34 points in three straight games. The public is all over the Jets, three quarters of the tickets and the money on this Jets team. They've certainly looked good, but isn't this like the point when you sell the stock? I wish they weren't playing the, the Bengals, to be honest with you, because I don't know. Are they going to be rallying around Dalton being back? I like That's no the part. I, I don't know what's going on in this locker room. That's certainly an awkward situation to be putting the entire team in now. 
you've kind of said, no, nope, we're moving on. Uh, not yet. Like this is when like Dalton came, showed up to your apartment drunk and said, yeah, you can put it in my ass this one time. <laughs> uh, so it's, it's weird for everyone. The roommates wake up. It's, it's a different girl. Who knows? I, I think you got to fade the jets though. Right. Mm. Isn't this the spot you fade the jets or do they keep it rolling? I'm, I, I'm kind of torn on this. Cause I think the jets have been playing good ball. And in a way, I I still think we're underrating how bad this Bengals team is. They have a coach who shouldn't be a coach. No one is discussing this. No one is bringing this up. They very clearly have. What happened to the, uh, hey, I knew Sean McVay. I should have a coaching job. What happened to that there? Well, he actually coached with Sean McVay, but still. He is, I mean, the Bengals are squarely below the Falcons, Giants, and Redskins when it comes to DVOA it's just not working out for him. Yeah. Give me the jets. I can't take the Bengals less than the touchdown. I think the jets have something to play for now. Strangely, even though Adam Gase is a psychopath, they look good right now. So I, I like this angle too many points, but I like it. <laughs> well, that's the other thing. It does feel it. It should be three. Right. It sh- the jets. Should Why be do a- they got to do this to us? Because right? lay the three and a half, Sean, trust your, trust your instincts. The favorites are going to come in heavy after the spread mattered five times, Sean, <laughs> It's not going to matter this week. Just pick winners. Cleveland heads to Pittsburgh, where Pittsburgh is a a two-and-a-half-point home dog, plus 115 on the money line. Browns minus 135. 40 is the total. The look ahead was Pittsburgh minus two-and-a-half. This is ridiculous. Ooh. They upgraded their quarterback. Steelers are not getting – Just sw- because they beat this shitty Dolphins the team? Steelers what are, are you talking they're about? They're not getting beat by the Browns twice. You also look at some of those touchdown throws. Two of those could have like, were close to being kind of picked off. If Minka Fitzpatrick was playing for the dolphins, he would have had one of those. Neither, neither one of these teams should be favored in this spot. Cleveland definitely should not be a road favorite. So I would have made this, I would have made this spread like Pittsburgh minus one. Minus I think two. I, I think Pittsburgh minus two and a half is the right number. Yeah. I wonder if the, the spread will swing across uh, over time because people are seeing the same thing. You have this weird revenge spot where no one involved in the incident will be playing to seek revenge. It's just going to be like <laughs> a big brawl in the stands. Cleveland, 25th in rush defense. I think they get Benny Snell going, like I was saying, in the DFS lineup. Do you know if they move this to 10 a.m. because they were worried about fights? This was originally scheduled for a late afternoon. Game. Possibly. Yeah. I mean, that kind of makes sense. But to me, the best unit on the on the field is still going to be the Steelers defense. Yeah. And uh, I think they show up. They really have been playing for Tomlin. Baker. I know Tomlin doesn't get respect yeah. as a coach, but he deserves no, no. some respect for this season and especially at home. Yeah. I mean, the team, it, he's clearly a good leader. I don't know if he's a great football mind. He's yeah. a great leader. And on the flip side, Cleveland smelling themselves. They, just they are, dude. It's so... <laughs> Oh my God! They just scored a bunch of points. They just beat the Steelers and the Dolphins back to uh, you know, I I I can't run quick enough to bet this number. It just feels completely wrong. Pittsburgh is the play. Moving to the afternoon kick, Sean, and we have no bye weeks this week, so we have extra games to cover. Booyah! Rams off the short week. They get Arizona off the bye, where Arizona is a three-point home dog, plus 140 on the money line. Rams minus three, minus 160. 47 is the total. Kyler Murray has been fun this year. The defense has left uh, has left a lot out there. Not not sure if they're a team you really want to get behind. But Clifton kind of sneaky competent uh, as a coach. I, I definitely thought Arizona's defense would be worse. They're still not great. But, uh, I mean, as – I mean – Jesus Christ, the Rams. How are they a road favorite against anyone after that? Sean, we're, we're not even sitting on chairs today. We're just sitting on stacks of cash that we've earned <laughs> from Jared Goff Sucks Island and all that it is, real estate development. It's a great development. investment. All that real estate invest, uh, development we've done over there. I And Gurley. Gurley is just RIP Ty Gurley. Met listen. the dude, super nice guy. <laughs> 2.89 9 yards per attempt at catching the ball. His... Uh, 2.89 yards per target, sorry, are the lowest by a running back with at least 28 targets since Ben Tate Wow! in 2013. Wow. Back up to Arian Foster. How about that? I mean, it's crazy that he went from being, like, one of the best running back uh, receivers out of the backfield to one of the worst, and not even just bad, but, like, historically bad. He had well, three I think catches one, for negative yards. Yeah, one, I think he just – the injury clearly has impact. Two – it's, it's not that surprising, thing. right? Like his scheme relied on them being able to run the ball. The offensive line takes a step back. 
The running game takes a step back. Right. Thus, Jared Goff takes crazy? a step back. Was Sean McVay Chip Kelly with better hair? This I, is my greatest take of all time. I, I think he same sort of thing. Awesome early, and then as you figure it out, it unravels. Perhaps. I, I mean, I think there's a little bit of Shanahan sprinkled in here. He he has that influence, and I I just just like with even good Shanahan teams. When they struggle to run the ball, they, they even look at San Francisco. When they, when San Francisco struggles to run the ball, they're going to yeah. struggle to win doesn't games. Set, so. It doesn't set the play action up. It, Goff can't read the field at all. Not scheming guys wide open. And yeah, the system made Goff look great for a year. But that, I think that you know, the, let's stop with that. Give me Kyler. Fuck it. Uh, plus, he's fun to watch. Like, yeah, I'm all over Kyler. Ky as Kyler well. uh, is is a fun and, dude and to watch. And at three, you could no, you could is, see yourself backdooring it or or making it a field goal. I game. understand why this isn't a the look ahead of three and a half is crazy. I almost bet it less. It just seems like the wrong number. This and, Rams and the team, Rams offensive line has been really really bad. Listen, my three to one taken on them or what two seventy five taken on the, on them to miss the playoffs. That's I think we can almost catch that. Uh, this should be a. This should probably be well, Rams the NFC minus, West. How minus, are they going to? This should be Rams pick at, at the best. I think chargers coming off the bye. They head to Denver where the look ahead had Denver favored by one and a half. It's now chargers minus two and a half minus half, minus one thirty five on the money line. Denver plus plus one fifteen forty 40 is the total. So is the rookie going to be starting for the Broncos? Have they announced it? They keep going back and forth. Uh, I don't know, man. I mean, I didn't think Allen looked uh, – he didn't look great against that Bills game, but he looked so good against the Vikings. It seemed like he had some Well, two chemistry. road games. Back-to-back -back road games. Now they're coming home. Yeah. I, I really wish – and I don't think Anthony Lynn, Anthony Lynn coming off a bye really is a huge uh, tick in the, in the Chargers' corner. I just – I don't know how – like, Phillip Rivers isn't really going to lose Br this Brandon game. Brandon Allen's right? not that bad, though. He's one and two. Completed 46% of his passage, which is really low, but three touchdowns, two interceptions. Here's what it comes down to. I, I think when I see Phillip Rivers and this Chargers team getting 85% of the tickets, I'm absolutely concerned. But here's the thing, Sean. Both these teams know how to lose games. Denver has lost a number of close games at home, a number of games by two points at home, last-minute field goal. Both these since, teams are going to be looking for ways to lose. Since. 2015 31 one score games uh this That's feels crazy. like a one score game i think von miller uh has a nice little game against philip rivers tears him apart I, I think this is the denver defense has shown spots where they've been competent and uh one of those is at home and i think they're going to be i think they're going to be juiced up and i, I think they're going to take care of business at home Chargers are not road favorite. And we've talked about how the buys haven't helped these offensive teams. And I don't think it's going to help the chargers. Although I do like Austin Eckler, throw him in a DFS lineup as far as getting some catches out of the backfield. Cause uh, he's done, man. Phillip rivers, bury the grave, bury the grave, throw him in the grave, Ryan. I, uh, I am going to be going with, I'll, I'll go with you here. I just, it, it just seems like both these teams will want to lose and both teams have found ways to lose games in the past. Sean, we are, uh, we are going extra long. People, people are going to get a lot of us this week on the mega pod. How many games we got left, Sean? Three more, four more. Let's though three more. Let's bang it out. Oakland close your eyes special this week, Sean. Ooh, that's fun. Yeah, it is. They head to Kansas City, coming off the bye. Andy Reid, we love that trend. Minus nine and a half. Thirteen and seven ATS off a of bye. Oh, it feels like it used to be thirteen and three. So maybe it's come down in recent yeah. years. Uh, Kansas City minus nine and a half, minus four seventy on the money line. Oakland plus three seventy five. Fifty one and a half is the total. Uh, this is the Oakland Super Bowl. As much as I want to lay the points here with this this Chiefs team, this is an. Oakland we got to get Super our Bowl shit going mentally. Yeah, uh, and I think you can get some tens too. Can you? I, you I find think a you can out there. I think you can if you're if you're on the Oakland side of the ball, which I am. Uh, nice little revenge spot for Oakland. They were clearly looking ahead past the Jets to this game against Kansas City. If they win this game, they're in the mix for the division. So, I mean, tons of motivation. Although the Chiefs have won nine of the last ten, but the Raiders really got embarrassed at home. And this Raiders team seems to have some sort of pride. 
Raiders are 18 and 12 ATS is a double digit underdog oh. since 2008. So I like that angle. I, you said Josh Jacobs. I think he, he's going to have a decent game. Tyree I do think Kill, he has a big game. Tyree Kill dealing with a uh, a minor injury, and that of course is not uh, an injury he's uh, put on a minor, but a uh, <laughs> a hamstring issue. <laughs> kind because of stuff. Yeah, I, I like say that. minor injury in Tyree uh, Kill. You have to uh, clarify, yeah, yeah. Ryan. <laughs> oh wait. But uh, I I just think this Raiders team is going to hang. Right? Can't you just this Kansas City Chiefs team is so bad. Uh, that I think the Raiders will kind of be in it, man. It's a great bounce back spot for the Raiders. And again, I think the bye doesn't help teams right now. The chiefs. Uh, I, I do think the chiefs are good. I think the chiefs defense is shown us reasons why they're going to, they're going to struggle to cover big numbers. I worry a little bit that they, the Raiders could fall too far behind, but I'm going to lean into my Josh Jacobs prediction. I'm going to lean into the fact that Gruden has the right game plan. And to your point, you can probably find a 10 out there. I was, I was looking to see if there was an updated number since you surely would let us adjust this, but indeed we cannot do that. It's still nine and a half over at my bookie. Uh, yeah, 70%, 70, 70% 70 of the tickets on the chiefs. Let's, uh, let's fade that. This is the super bowl for the Raiders. Uh, we're going to take the closure eyes special this week, which Sean, by the way, mm. not a great start for the closure eyes special, but it's up to six, six and one against the spread. One in twelve straight up still. So we, we like the spread to matter in this one. Sunday night football. New England heads to Houston coming off Thursday night. New England minus three and a half. Minus one eighty on the money line. Plus one fifty five for the Texans. Forty four and a half is the total. Ah, uh, yeah. So Watson in prime time. Is that the angle you're going with? Because there's a lot of different angles you can go with. And to me The Patriots are gonna lose a random game at some point. Yeah. Uh, they they've they've slowly been teetering but i don't know if this is the game houston like i i just feel like deshaun watson's gonna get destroyed bill o'brien belichick you have that angle you have the fact that certainly how does how does belichick do against his uh former assistant he murders them yeah he absolutely murders them and this number is not big enough it came down a point from the look ahead from four and a half to three and a half totally makes sense why it's three and a half I, I, I Patriots defense too much. This Houston team still does not take care of the ball well enough. Yeah, Watson uh, is Watson, willing to give it away. Seven sacks. Like the guy just holds onto the ball too much. He's trying to do uh, too much. And Huge game for them, but uh, you know, I, I, I don't really want to get in the way of this this Patriots defense right now. This isn't the spot to get cute and fade them. No, uh, I mean, again, it is a historically good defense. I think they'll get up for this game. I mean, do we need to drag out the Brady and primetime numbers? It's a baby fucking wheel, man. Again, to me, it's just Deshaun Watson. He's shown up in certain spots, right? Like spots where, you know, he's going to have more time. But even that even that Colts game, like I just don't see him. I don't I don't see him getting those. Uh, deep balls to Hopkins that kind of bailed him out in that Colts game because you have Gilmore like I, I think I'll give you a reason for down. pause. You know they have on deck New England, yeah, Kansas City. But they're not a. Are they going to really look past no, Houston to get they to Kansas don't. City? They that's don't. Not, they're going to Belichick. I. I that's think not this team's ever. Something went down between Bill O'Brien and Belichick. He does not like him. He's not treated him well. He's going to smash him. I could be completely wrong. I'm pretty sure he's just done nothing but put him in, put him in a headlock and throwing him a, a fucking noogie. New England wins big. <laughs> Monday Night Football, Minnesota off the pie. Kirk Cousins in prime time against Danger Russ, who couldn't be more opposite uh, people right there, caricatures, right? Talk about a superhero versus well, just Well, they a both love God. <laughs> <laughs> Seattle minus three, minus 155 on the money line. Kirk Cousins. You like and that? You like that? And the fighting school, 135 on the money line, 49 is the total. Uh, yeah, it, you're, this is there's no handicap here. You're... You, you, Ten times out of ten, you take Danger Russ here, Ryan. How um, often? How often does Haley's comment happen? Right, once every twenty-five years. <laughs> he's not going to win. Captain Kirk isn't going to win back-to-back -back road primetime games. Come on, are you kidding no, me? No. Uh, I also they keep running that uh, promo, the trailer for the Richard Jewell movie, okay. and kind of <laughs> reminded me of Kirk Cousins because in the same way. Who is Richard Jewell? Who is Kirk Cousins, right? At first, he comes to your town. Oh, my God, he found the bomb. He's a hero. Yeah. And then they start looking at him closer like, wait, 
maybe he's part of the problem. Maybe yeah. he's sabotaging us. Mm. Maybe he's the guy that we should put in jail. And then he, oh, wait, no, it turns out he, he was good all along. Uh, similar, similar up and down journey for Captain Kirk. I think here is where he gets exposed. Seattle just keeps winning close games. I'm kind of almost scared of the minus three aspect of it. This feels like a 28, 27 type game that no, I'm taking Seattle minus three, but when it actually comes down to betting it, I might, I may Sean, go money line. You have forgotten. Both of these teams have three and a half point home field edges. Yeah. No, both but of not, the both of these Seattle. teams are worse. They are uh, a, a bigger gap between their road and home performances. Sure, you might argue that Seattle's been a little bit more level, but Minnesota especially. There's a big gap between what this team is at home and what they are on the road, and a lot of that has to but do with Seattle, how that defense plays. But Seattle three and two at home, six and zero oh on the road. That's why I said, if anything, they've leveled out a little bit. I just, again, no handicap required fade Kirk Cousins in yep. prime time here against a guy who is just he's on a mission this year Russ danger Russ maybe he went to Utah and learned about soaking and it, it just straightened him out <laughs> he's just murdering right now it goes real well with his con con concussion juice oh one more time all right Sean we uh we're almost to two hours Wow, we're that's almost why we hours. warned the people with the mega podcast. I, I didn't think it was going to be this long. We we made it this long. Let's get out of here with the Lock Dog Tees. Oh, well, of course, Ryan, the Lock Dog Tees presented by MyBookie.ag. Make sure you get that free bet in. I know I got my 250 bucks down on the Bears. Happy birthday. Lock, dog, and tease it, Ryan. Oh, I go first? Sure. You want me to go first? Doesn't matter. My picks <sighs> suck. Wow. Sean. All right. It's you not, know what? I need confidence. That, I'm going to get some confidence. That is not how we. Okay. <coughs> For my dog. It's not a big dog, but it's a dog I love. Give me well, the hold Pittsburgh on, Sean. Steelers. It's Thanksgiving. We also should have to give out a, a Thanksgiving lock. Yeah. Okay. All right. My Thanksgiving lock. Uh, Give me Chicago. Minus. Uh, do I like that the best? You know what? Give me New Orleans minus seven. Um. It's nothing crazy, but for my dog, it's obviously Buffalo. Again, Ryan, you've already boxed yourself into a hole here. Oh, no, you don't have to give a dog. I just say give a lock for Thanksgiving. Give <laughs> the people one play on Thanksgiving. Okay, I'll give you a lock and a dog. New Orleans minus seven at Buffalo plus 250. Okay. For my regular week seven or whatever fucking week it is, week 14. Not even close with week seven. You're tired. I understand. Who are you locking up? Ride. Who are you locking up? Who am I locking up? Do I just keep it simple and go Indy minus two and a half? Sure. Ooh. I like that. Yeah. I mean, what el what are you, what else are you considering? Let me, let me help you. Let me help guide you through this. Process. Yeah. You know what? Nothing else is really jumping out at me. You like Pittsburgh. You really liked Pittsburgh. Yeah, Indy minus two and a half. My dog, it's a small dog. Give me Pittsburgh plus one fifteen for my tease. Let's make this interesting here. Um, do I throw? I can't throw Tampa in a tease. That is just. Uh, I'm gonna help. You want to help Green Bay? You want to put that in a tease? Oh my God! Yeah, right. Green Bay minus one, and that certainly has lock potential. Green Bay minus one. Carolina knock it down to four. Mm. Very reasonable number for them to cover. And the last leg of my tease, they say 49ers up to 12. No, they can fuck that up. Mm -hmm. Arizona up to nine. Chargers up to or Broncos up to eight and a half. Chargers covering eight and a half points. Uh, Seattle. Oh man, Seattle's a potential lock as well. You know what? Yeah. Oh uh, shit. Fucking I am in my head. I'll go see. Uh, no, Why are you I'm staying with Indy minus two on, and a half? Dude. Right. Come on. I'm man. figuring. I'm fixing my horrible picks. Pulling back the curtain here. And for the last leg of the tease, give me New Orleans minus one. Lock Seattle. Come on. Again, no handicap or cut required. There you go. Uh, for my Thanksgiving lock, let's be thankful, Sean. Mm. It, come on. Just 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 take the Dallas Cowboys. Just take just take That it. is a disgusting act. So Dallas minus seven. Uh, because I don't have a dog, I, I'll uh, I'll happily throw out that three team tease. Chicago plus three. Minus one for Dallas, minus one for 
the Saints. That's going to pay plus 180 for my regular dog, Sean. I, I don't think – do you want some company on that Pittsburgh wagon? I'll, I'll stay off of it. Give me Arizona. I think mm. this is the nail in the Rams missed the playoff coffin. I think Kingsbury with the week off actually may help that team. That, that's the, the, they're, 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 they're on the right path for my tease. Uh, can, I, can I also use – I mean, I, I would just put Green Bay in there. I would put – Okay. I would also put Dallas in there. Okay. And then uh, let's let's tease the Steelers up to eight and a half. Ooh, there you go. The Wong teaser teaser in action. Lot, lots of Wong this week. So, Ryan Long Cox, Long Cox, indeed, Long Pod. But we do it for you, the listeners. <laughs> again, thank you guys for supporting, rating, and review, and sharing on iTunes. That's so important. That helps us destroy these other weak, weak entertainment media properties. And again, rate, review, and share. We need that, guys. We need that mojo. Happy Thanksgiving for the Sports Gambling Podcast. I am Sean Stacking the Money Green, and he is Ryan. Happy Thanksgiving. Soy Boy Kramer. Let it ride.